KDKA TV2 presents Pirate Baseball 79. Tonight from Candlestick Park, the Bucks meet the San Francisco Giants. Pirate Baseball 79 is brought to you in part by your local Pepsi Cola bottlers who invite you to have a Pepsi day. And in part by Mellon Bank. You get a good feeling for saving at Mellon Bank. Messages promoting attendance at Pirate Games are paid for by the Pittsburgh Athletic Company, Incorporated. Hello again, everybody. This is Milo Hamilton as we greet you from a windblown candlestick. It's that way a lot of times, and it's chilly and nippy here tonight. And we'll probably show you some flag shots. I know Brian's been checking around here because when we arrived today, it was already blowing a gale. They've had a couple of nice days preceding our arrival, but boy, they've got a cold one here tonight. So everybody's going to be bundled, and we're hoping that the Bucks can keep it going. What a road trip we've had winning the series at San Diego two out of three and doing the same thing at Los Angeles. Now here tonight Don Robinson with a record of six and six encouraged certainly by the way that he pitched in the 19 inning game which was last uh, Saturday in San Diego. He's going in trying to break out of a slump of getting things ready and then we will be looking at a left hander for the Giants John Curtis his record is nine and eight. That's a deceiving record. He's lost a lot of tough games for this club. So we're going to take a look at the lineups that go with those starting pitchers and let's go down to home plate and see what's happening and there's Bill Madlock uh, took out the lineup coming back to this park for the first time as a pirate and Mad Dog went out to being on the conference with the skipper of the Giants Joe Altabelli with the crew in blue. We will be back with the lineups right after this message. Saving a few seconds may save a few lives. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Fred, <laughs> how's a new father? How about a peek? Wow. A boy and another boy. Red, you're going to need help. <laughs> Why don't you talk to my bank, Mellon Bank, about a home improvement loan. They make more than any bank in town. Fast, too, 24 hours. I mean, let's face it, you need a new addition. But, uh oh to the house, Red. Making home improvement loans. This is Mellon Banking. The lineup for the Bucks that'll go against the left-hander Curtis has Moreno leading it off and playing center. Tim Foley will be back in there, and he will be playing shortstop tonight and batting in the two spot. Lee Lacy is going to be in left field. He'll bat third. Bill Robinson is the cleanup batter tonight. Robinson's going to replace Parker in right field. Bill Madlock at third, hitting fifth. John Milner at first, batting sixth with the Injury to Parker. Milner's going to have to go in there against the lefty. Phil Garner will be at second base and bat seventh. Steve Nicosia will catch and bat eighth. And Don Robinson with a record of six and six, one and zero oh against the Giants lifetime. Now let's put the Giants on the field for you to go with Curtis. There's the left-hander. He's completed his warm-up tosses and on the field. Well, his battery mate is Dennis Littlejohn. In center, Bill North. Right fielder Larry Herndon, left field Terry Whitfield, an infield first around to third, Mike Ivey, Joe Strain, Roger Metzger, and Darrell Evans. All right, we're ready to go. Leading it off will be Omar Moreno. And you know, during tonight's game, we'll have three Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes innings. Jackpot is now $500, so I know you want to stay with us for all the home run sweepstakes excitement. And Omar stepping in to lead it off, try to get something going in a hurry here. Omar comes in with a batting average of 289 and we something blowing around down there <laughs> hot dog wrappers and everything one ball no strikes showed bunt took a strike in a one one count situation now and Omar steps out a moment Foley's on deck then it'll be Lacey. Courtesy a lefty with good stuff. We beat him in a ball game earlier this year when we got back to back homers and it was a tough one for him. And that is a strike came over the top with a breaking ball and it's one and two. In the background there you could see uh, 
Al Monchek, who coaches at first for Chuck Tanner. And of course, standby down at third is Joe Lynette. With Moreno waiting for the left hander. And the one two goes outside, and that'll level it at two and two. Jim Rooker finally found the spot he's always wanted to be in this ballpark behind a window. Swings and misses. And Omar strikes out to start this game. So it's one up and one away. Curtis opens with a strikeout. Tim Foley will be stepping in. Tim is batting 281 for the year. 49 runs batted in. He'll be followed by Lee Lacey. Jim Rooker has joined us in the booth now. And last weekend, of course, he was doing some of his work. But he's working in more in earnest now because he's going to start one of the games on Monday against the Phillies on Labor Day. So a little bit different. You're probably doing some things now that you weren't a week ago, aren't you? Oh, that's true, Milo. I'm throwing, uh, probably stretching it out a little more, plus spending more time out there on the mound. A ball and a strike to Foley. Started it with a strikeout on Moreno. Foley, who has been playing for maybe a month and a half, but the hamstring pull has a groin injury to add to that. One ball and two strikes has fouled enough of it for the foul tip. Dave Parker missing his first game of the year. Kind of a funny accident the other night, his last time at bat in Los Angeles. As he tried to get out of the batter's box in a hurry, his back foot stuck. Spikes wouldn't release, twisted his knee, fouled off. And I say the oddity of that kind of an injury because all the walls he runs into <laughs> and everything and then a goofy accident like that takes him out of the lineup. Right. You don't expect something like that to happen. But, you know, in Dodger Stadium, that one thing about that ballpark that we've all talked about before is as beautiful as it is, the infield probably, I would say, is a got, got a chance of being the worst infield in the league. Oh, it's like concrete. It is. It's awful tough there. And you get your feet stuck there sometimes. It could, it could probably at times, I say possibly. Uh, caused some kind of an injury. So his left knee is puffed up, and uh, the way it looked tonight, they might have to drain that thing tomorrow. Fouled off up to the right side. Jim, as you arrive, and since one of your peers out there, another left-hander, tell us what Curtis does to our club. Well, I'll tell you, John has been so pretty effective this year. I think uh, this is the best we've ever seen him pitch. But breaking balls, I think. Bouncer short. Metzger had a little trouble, but a stretching ivy helps him on the other end. They water this wind infield down so heavily, I think uh, Metzger almost got stuck in the mud, and we're going to take a look at him as he slips and slides here as the bat comes off on the replay off Foley's bat. It's an awful tough play. Uh, you can, there he's right there. He said, yeah, he did slide a little bit on the infield as he threw the ball, or felt feel of the ball. That plus the wind, everybody's heard about the wind out here, and it just, uh, it makes it tougher to do anything. Lee Lacey, the left fielder, batting in the three spot. Showed Bunt took a strike. Lacey batting 262, four homers, 11 runs batted in. Nobody on, two down. Moreno struck out. Foley bounced out to his counterpart, Metzger. Playing Lacey to pull in left and in center. Low inside, and the right fielder, Herndon, if anything, is shaded a little toward the right field line and shallowed up so. Lacey's really got a gap in right center here. He sure does. You know, and getting back to Curtis, you'll see probably he's going to use a lot of breaking pitches. That's what he did against us last time, and he has to do that to be successful. Lined right out north who might come in a step. Yep, and the side has been retired. So Curtis has a 1-2-3 inning, getting this ball game underway. After a half an inning, Giants and the Buccos starting this weekend. We've got our starting pitcher, Don Robinson, headed to the hill, and the Giants are just now coming into bat. John Curtis here in the lineup that they put on the field with him. Starts off like this. Center fielder is Bill North. Joe Strain, rookie second baseman, bat second. Mike Ivey, their hottest bat, is at first and hitting third. Darrell Evans moves up to the cleanup spot tonight as they've got Clark and uh, McCovey out of there. Darrell Evans will play third and bat cleanup. Terry Whitfield in left batting fifth. The six hitter, right fielder Larry Herndon. The shortstop is Roger Metzger, batting seventh. Dennis Littlejohn, the catcher who really hurt us in the series at home recently. 
and he's batting eighth, and then John Curtis, of course, will bat ninth. As Robinson finishes the warm-up, let's take a look at the Bucks on the field and set them defensively. Moreno's in center, flanked by Bill Robinson in right tonight. Lee Lacey's in left. Robinson and Nicosia, the battery. Infield first around a third of Milner, Garner, Foley, and Madlock. And Bill North, a switch hitter, going to step in and lead it off. I think, Jim, we were both impressed and encouraged by the work that Don Robinson did in relief in that marathon last Saturday night in San Diego. So he comes with that stuff tonight here. He's going to step in and help us, I think. Well, that's true. And uh, this time of the year, that's where all the money's on the line. So that's when we really need it the most. Ball outside to Bill North. Switch hitter coming in hitting 268, five homers and 28 runs batted in. And a pitcher doesn't want this fellow to reach, just like other clubs don't want Moreno to reach. Well, that's true. North is the, uh, I would say, motivating force. What, 20 out of 50 stolen bases, or 20 caught stealing. 50 and out of 70, and nobody's ever stolen 50 in a giant uniform here. It puts a lot of pressure on you, and, uh, you know, you get the leadoff guy on like him. Uh, it means early scoring usually in the game, and that's uh, what, the, what the pitcher likes, to work with a little comfort. And runs. he's behind 3-0. And loses him on four pitches. So North is on with a pass, and it'll bring up Strain. Dave Bristol, their regular third base coach, has been ailing for a couple, three days with a bad back. So Jimmy Davenport, their regular first base coach, is over at third. And Tom Haller, their bullpen coach, comes in and coaches first base. They were kidding, saying maybe uh, Bristol's back got bad three days ago and Altabelli held on to his jab. <laughs> Speaking of that, they had a little turnover in Philly. Danny Ozark is gone as the skipper of the Phillies. Fakes a break, doesn't go, and he gets it in for a strike on Strain. Strain batting 251, one homer and 11 runs batted in. We did a good job on him in the series at home, held him to two hits and 15 at bats. Looks like a little plugger, this guy. A lot of scrap and fight you and get his uniform dirty yeah he he strikes us that way he doesn't look like he has any outstanding real outstanding qualities it's probably the fact that he does a lot of things and does them all pretty well pretty much well north at first nobody out a walk put him on we're in the bottom of the first Robbie works on north but not close we will also be televising tomorrow afternoon we'll probably pick up uh, maybe some of the first game at the end and then all of the second game tomorrow Good strong throw, but on the home plate side. Right. Robbie's got a good move to first. Everybody knows that. And he's going he's gonna to keep him close. I can recall in Los Angeles him throwing over there 20 times when Davey Lopes was on first base at one time. That's... <laughs> in fact, their about. dugout started hollering at him. Right. A fake and a break doesn't go. Bouncer scraps. Going to be tough here. He can throw there to first and get that one. Now Milner's good throw to Foley, who will tag out north. Geiner handled that very well. That's he the, knew that if he jacked around, he was going to be in trouble. He went right to first. Right. You, I'll tell you what, very seldom. Very seldom will you see the play made that way, but to get the double play, that's the only thing you can do. Phil did the smart thing. He stops him there. When the guy goes back, there's no way now, after getting the guy out of first base, that North can beat the ball to second. It's just impossible. Two good throws, a double play. And Scraps did something with North that helped. He ran him back toward first about three steps. That meant he had, if he was going back the other way, that was six more steps he had to take. Right. He had his momentum going the other way, and he just couldn't recover. This is Mike Ivey. Big breaking ball that time. Ivey hitting 310. This kid's a good hitter, isn't he? He is. We still, this, this uh, road trip, talking about when we were in San Diego and then going to Los Angeles to see Daryl Thomas, how they could trade Mike Ivey from San Diego for Daryl Thomas. I still can't figure that one out. Here's a guy who's not even played in about 30 or 40 of their games as a starter, and he's got 21 homers and 72 runs batted in. He's a hitter. We, we knew that when we saw him. Uh, first couple of years he was in the league, and, uh, you know, he's so big and strong, he doesn't take a real big swing. He's nice, quick stroke, and he puts the bat on the ball most of the time and does something with it. Started as a catcher. He's got those good hands. He's a good first baseman. He can play some third if you get in a tough spot. He can play the outfield. One ball and two strikes. Pretty good explanation today. He's talked about it for years because he was signed as a $100 bonus baby as a catcher right out of high school. And then first year in the minors, had a good year, and then decided he didn't want to catch. 
And, boy, and if you ever mentally get yourself in a frame of mind that you don't want to catch, it's best you don't go back there. That's it's true. tough enough if you like it. That's true. Plus, if you can hit, they can find another position for you. Fouled off. And the, <laughs> as uh, Joe Altabelli said the other day about him, I got to get him in my lineup every day because the way he's hitting, he's got to play somewhere for me every day now. Right. And getting back to the catcher, I still can't understand why anybody would want to be a catcher to begin with. <laughs> you hear me, Pam Nicosia? I have a message from Steve. This is a quote from him. The dork says hello to Pam and the Kimberly. <laughs> that came from him now. <laughs> Knocked down, but will there be a play? Good yes. play. Good, Good play. play because Milner stayed with it, and Robbie did his job getting over to take that throw. So score it 3-1. to one. The ball was hit like a bullet to the opposite side. Milner stayed with it. And Robbie did his job, and as you look at it again, we'll give you the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, a walk, a double play, and a fine play there. Look at John scramble, and then throw it. Really not a chance to get a lot on it, but enough, and Robbie was right there ahead of the runner. So we might look back on that as a big play before the night is over. We've played an inning. Bucks nothing, Giants nothing. Well, here we go to the second inning, and this is it for the Blue Monday group. Some of the folks got together out in Bridgeville and sent a card in. Well, the Blue Monday group can root the Bucks home during this top of the second. If a home run is hit, the Blue Monday group of Bridgeville is going to back up the truck and get $500 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. And who have we got for contestants at, on the hitting end? Well, Bill Robinson, that's not a bad candidate for that. He's got 23 homers and 62 runs batted in. Robbie is uh, batting clean up tonight and playing right field. He's hitting 266. Madlock on deck, then Milner. Almost looked like he didn't want to swing at that and couldn't help it. Right. Uh, Robbie committed himself pretty early and he just couldn't stop his bat. Lying down toward the left field corner. That's going to be caught as the left fielder Whitfield got a good break on the track and raced right toward the corner. He doesn't make a good initial break on that ball. He might have had some trouble with it. He got a good jump as soon as Robbie hit the ball. Plus the wind here, it swirls, it goes in and out, and uh, it kind of, it'll hold just about every ball up that's hit out there. All right, now Bill Madlock gets the greeting that I'm sure he thought <laughs> would be there when he got back. That's surprising. I thought he was doing pretty well out here. Well, I did too, but I guess since he was traded away, They want to let him know they remember. Yeah. Well, there's one good way to turn, turn that around. Hit one about 10 feet farther to left than Robbie <laughs> just did. Mad Dog hitting 288, 13 homers, 72 runs batted in. Strike one. That might be the quietest 72 RBIs around. Plus the average. He just, uh, everything. Dog just fit into the lineup and has done a great job for us. Since coming to us, he's hitting 323 as a pirate. Got him in a hole 0-2. Curtis, the left-hander, working. Madlock might have questioned that call a little bit. At least that's the way it looks. I think what's going to happen here tonight, Milo, there was a case right there where our hitters are going to have to look for the breaking ball. And he just he just slipped in a courtesy fastball on him right there. And there's that breaking ball right yep. there. And Doggy was trying to, it was a way he was going to try to go to right field with him. Mm -hmm. Curtis has good breaking stuff. I, as I said earlier, he's pitched, especially against us now, the game in Pittsburgh, he pitched a heck of a game until he made two mistakes. Back to back. Back to back, yeah. Other, otherwise, uh, he had us iced down. When you've pitched the game as well as he had in that game, and I'll get to that as soon as we get this pitch ball, doesn't sometimes the, and I don't mean that the home run was a shock, the first one, but almost sometimes you come back maybe before you should have pitched. Maybe if you'd have thought about it another minute or just taken a little walk on the back of the hill. Back to back homers against two left hand batters. Right. You never know really uh, why or what I think some, sometimes here. See, he threw, I think, Bill, only one fastball. Everything else was something moving. Those seemed maybe to bend sliders, but a lot of curveballs in there. But. Move the it, ball in and out on him, too. Right, it does help to back off, uh, get your concentration back, because sometimes you you get mad over a mistake and they hit a home run and it costs you the ball game. And as it was uh, 
Parker and Stargell took him back to back, but other than that, the guy did not make a mistake all night long. He just pitched an outstanding ball game. Even in losing, it was outstanding. The Blue Monday group, as the runner starts, and would the run and hit, Hammer hits it behind him down the right side, and it'll put runners on the corners. So there's the first hit of the game. Milner, who came in with a batting average of 294, 15 homers and 52 ribbies, now Scraps has a chance to do some good here. And we're going to take another look. Here's the breaking ball. Well, we didn't get to see it there, but he threw him a breaking ball, and he got it up. Hammer really kind of gave a little bit on that pitch, but the fact that he did leave it up around his shoulders gave him a chance to hit the ball. There it is, whacked it to right field, and uh, we're in business. Geiner hitting 293, nine homers, 40 runs batted in, a chance to get us on the board. Runners on the corners, one out. The Blue Monday group in Bridgeville hoping Scraps can tattoo one here because we're playing Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes and $500 worth of groceries if Geiner would get his 10th homer. He just tried to move some infielders right there. Right, yeah, Phil isn't going to bunt. Uh, he probably, other than doing that, I think he wanted to get a look at the pitch too, see maybe what kind of breaking ball Curtis has. He has a real good overhand curveball, and he's not going to overpower you with his speed, but he, you know, a control type pitcher, and if he's got that good overhand curveball going for him, going to, I mean, throwing it for strikes, he's going to be awful tough. Now there, there's Phil again. I'm sure he's thinking breaking ball. And there he just slipped him. He's not going to overpower you, like I said, but just that, the fact that he's looking for the breaking ball. That might be the only Swifty Hill show, Garner. <laughs> you know? Possible. Yeah. He wants the double play ball. Little tapper, first base side. Uh, Ivy had trouble with it, never did get the handle. And I think uh, he might have heard some footprints. I think Garner bothered him a little bit. He did. Now, we don't quite have the angle there. That, that ball may have had a chance to go foul. But, but you, you've got to make that play right away or, or let it go completely. They're going to give an error to Ivy because he came in. And we're, we're going to isolate on Ivy here, Jim, and see just what kind of trouble he really ended up having with it. Okay, on a ball, you can see it kind of kicked to the right a little bit. And the fact that it went so, so quickly to him, there he's going to drop it right there. That's strange, you know. It looked like he looked like he tagged Phil. <laughs> I think that may have been his argument. That's Phil's uh, rendition of Superman, man, man. I think right there. Well, Madlock scored, and we're on the board one to nothing. We'll take him out any way we can get him. I'm not. You bet. We believe don't want it. those 19 inning jobs. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Montreal just tied the Reds seven seven. Reds had him down seven to five. Dallas Green, the new skipper of the Phillies, got his baptism tonight, and uh, it's a rain delay, five innings, and the Phillies are leading Atlanta in Atlanta, 6-2. to two. San Diego got those hard-hitting Cardinals on the short end, 3-2 to two San Diego after two. Houston shot out the Mets 2 to nothing. That's a game Houston really needed. You know, those Atlanta people must think that somebody has something against them. Have they got a lot of rain down there this last week or so? I think, what was it, last weekend with Montreal, they got the whole thing rained out. All right. Nikosha the batter. Hey, he had a good rip. Steve had a big hit the other night against the Dodgers for us. He did. He started the big uh, winning rally, as it was. And, uh, you know, I, as we mentioned last week, uh, He's impressed a lot of people. The fact that he stepped in right his first, you know, his first year like this, and have, uh, I think his, his aggressiveness has been the key to the whole thing. 281 average, four homers, ten ribbies. Oh, that one he muscled up on a fastball there, and it sailed. The Blue Monday group is still waiting. They want one out of here as we play Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. The Blue Monday group of Bridgeville. Milner second, Garner first. Yeah, it took a little something off there. There's that good slow breaking ball, and uh, he throws, I think, a variation, a good hard overhand curve. He took something off that one, and then he throws a slider. So he really has three, maybe even four different types of breaking pitches, a la Enrique Romo, maybe. There's a base hit through the hole. Now it's hit sharply. They're going to wave Milner. The throw to the plate is going to be way off target. That's also going to allow Nicosia a chance to get into second base. Good heads up base running right there. You better believe it. Milner scored. I'll tell you one thing. 
that that third base coach has to know. He has to know all those arms. Joe was committed immediately that he was going to challenge that left fielder. He had him going all the way. Nick didn't break stride. He didn't stop. He had second base in mind as soon as he got around the bag. Well, Whitfield's got a decent arm. It, it, the throw was offline. Had it not been offline, it would have been pretty close play at the plate. We've got some good base runners on this ball club. Good, smart base runners, other than the speed. That's right. We got some guys who don't have great speed, but boy, they get on those bases. They just use their noodles, and it pays off. That's right. You don't have to be fast. Smart will do. Two to nothing, Bucks. Infield up all the way around. Ball one to Robinson, who's got a chance to help himself. This would be a spot where he could really give himself some breathing room. That's right, and it's there's Curtis throwing him a, a breaking ball at first pitch. So there again, there's an indication that that's what we're going to see tonight. The guy's a breaking ball pitcher, and he's not going to give in. He's going to throw his stuff. Ball two. Now, Donnie's had eight hits this year. He's not a bad hitting pitcher. In fact, he's a pretty good one. All of his hits have been singles, three RBIs. Well, Robbie is definitely going to hit a home run in the big leagues. He's got the power to do it. That's ball three. I'll tell you one thing. You throw a ball above the letters to him, and as big <laughs> and strong as he is, he can tomahawk a ball about as good as anybody. Right, and with authority. The ball takes <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, three and oh, two on. Gets that one in there. Three balls and a strike. Now here... Yeah, there's okay. Woo. Robbie, Robbie, here's where Robbie's going to guess with him a little bit, Milo. He's going to say, "I'm going to look for the fastball." I think. Now, this is this is the way he usually hits. Yeah. And he hate tomahawk there. Yes, he, he went down on that one. He's strong, isn't he? He is. He is strong. Three balls, two strikes. There's only one away. The inning started, and you know the the only out of the inning, Robinson's ball. He hit it pretty well. That's I right. think the wind flattened it out a little for him. It did, and you know I don't want to give these. Well, we'll wait. Walk the pitcher. Now Omar with a chance to help the cause. Two runs are in. That's the second walk of the inning and of the game off Curtis. And of course the warm-up jacket will be going down for Don Robinson. A pitcher doesn't dare not put something on that arm and shoulder on a night like this here. No, the only one that I would ever expect not to would be a Mike Marshall. But it's <laughs> it's uh, even though it's not cold uh, tonight or like it is early in the year, it. Uh, you know this wind will really do something stiffen up your arm on you Joe out to belly the manager who's been under a little heat here is out talking that wind is really blowing I want to tell you and while he chats we're going to remind you this copyrighted telecast is authorized under television rights granted by the Pirates solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication reproduction or other use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Pirates is prohibited well, here comes Pops and the Cobra and Bibbs. Now, there's three guys. <laughs> <laughs> there's three guys that'll run on the field and turn the win around on you. <laughs> yeah, and you notice how the field kind of tilted toward the first base dugout <laughs> when they ran by? That is a lot of meat on the hoof right there, folks. Bases loaded for Omar, who struck out swinging in the first, and the Blue Monday group of Bridgeville is still looking for somebody to get one out of here. Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning. I'll tell you, Milo, I, I'm pulling for, for the home run, but whoever hits one, I think they ought to give them $500, too, because it's going to take some kind of bolt to get it out of here tonight. And there's no way to read the wind, because as you pointed out, you don't know where it's blowing in some spots. That's hey, right. got that good pitch over. Got him in a hole 0 and 2 now. Foley due up next. Two runs have crossed. Madlock walked and scored. Milner singled and came home. Garner reached on an error. Nikosha got a runner home. So that's the way the Bucks have done it here. Getting out in front for Don Robinson against Curtis. Well, I tell you, uh, he didn't get that exactly where he wanted it, but the way he'd gotten the ball over the outside corner, then running it in, he's, he's got a pretty good idea how he wants to work on the hitters. Well, he's setting him up, I think, for a breaking ball right here. Get him off the plate, maybe, and then come back with a breaking pitch. There it is. And that ball's going to scoot up the middle. Garner scores three to nothing. Nicosia scores four to nothing. There's the Nick getting a handshake from Scraps. We love it, folks. And Robinson gets around to third. That was one of those balls that had eyes, wasn't it? Yeah, that plus now, that shows right there the kind of hitter that Omar Moreno has become. Two strikes, decent breaking ball. Look at Omar stay right with it, had his head down on the ball, took him up the middle. 
is not trying to pull the ball. You know, the, it's it's not the same Omar Moreno that we've seen the last year or two. The guy, you talk about MVPs for clubs. Of course, we've got three, four other guys, I think, that are in the running. But Omar has got to be right up at the top of the list with any of them. Well, not only in the year that he's having individually, but the way he responded to going to the leadoff spot after the deal. That's true. That's true. Let's just say, for sake of argument, that they put him up there and it doesn't work. That could mean that could take our club, you know, as a whole. It could hurt us. But him and Tim of getting Tim, he's perfect for the second uh, spot in the order too. And having a guy like Omar in front of him, you couldn't ask for a better combination. One ball, no strikes. Foley batting. He bounced to short in the first inning. He's batting for the Blue Monday Group of Bridgeville. Yeah, Omar's going. There's a high pop. Now Omar doesn't know where the ball is. That's the risk you take. It's going to be a double play. He was going, and when the ball was popped up, his momentum took him all the way to second. Then having to scamper back just could not do it. So it's a pop up to the second baseman strain, and firing it onto Ivy. They get the double play. But the Bucks get on the board with a four spot on one, two, three hits. There was one error on the first base, but Ivy that helped us, and two men left on. So no home run was hit during this giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but no one ever loses here. Our contestant, the Blue Monday Group of Bridgeville, will receive a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at participating grocers. Our next giant Eagle sweepstakes tonight will be worth $600. So Don Robinson's going to go to the hill for the second with this lead. Buckos four, Giants nothing. <laughs> Comes back to level at two and two. No fooling around there, no cute stuff, just bring it at him. You know, Viv has changed his style or his pattern a little bit more this year. He's throwing more fastballs because he's got a darn good one and he should use it more, and I think it's been a pretty good reason why he's done a little better. Boy, Powder River there. That's right. Here it is. Hit it if you can. Yeah, in most I, cases, they're not going to hit it. <laughs> well, I think Harvey Haddix, fellow we talked about last night, Jim, had a lot to do with that. I think he convinced Jim. He said, look, when you nibble around and are fooling around and trying to be perfect, you get in trouble. That's with true. as big as you are and as hard as you can throw start challenging people and boy look at the results nine and three right uh, the thing is with a breaking ball bib has a, a, a better than average breaking assortment but good hitters uh, and there are more and more coming in the league every year can adjust to a breaking ball as opposed to a good hard fastball so if you have one use it rob andrews batting for the first time in the series oh! that takes a strike Andrews hitting 242 and it, I'll tell you another thing it's helped him because control used to be his problem he's a much better control pitcher now well the fastball is easier to get over and right. uh, you get ahead of the hitters fouled it down the right side don't think there'll be a play it's going to drop too quickly Robbie made the good effort on it but didn't have a chance to get a dropping down by the bullpen area. Waiting for everybody to get back in place now. Still want to set up that defense for you when we get the opportunity. No what, balls, two strikes. What is it going to be? 50, 60 degrees out here? Bib will still sweat like it was 105. Oh, boy, he's, he's like a faucet, isn't he? <laughs> he's something else. He soaks up about three caps a game. One ball and two strikes. And one he pitches like in a place like Atlanta. <laughs> Oh, brother. It's a struggle. It's, uh, well, it's not a struggle. It's an effort. But he can put it back on. He, he only weighs about 250. Good Took pitch. a little something off, didn't he? There's uh, a little bit of what you see Bert Blylevin do. Drop down a little bit, almost sidearm. And uh, you don't really, Bibby doesn't do that very often. And when a hitter sees it for the first time, his mind, he's saying, what's going on here? Swinging at the motion there. That's right. Here's Jack Clark, two for six in the series. Clark batting with nobody aboard and two down. We're early. We're just in the bottom of the first of the second game. Bucks took the opener five to three. Glad we could get on at the end and show you that drama and also the unusual managerial moves. There's a crack bat bouncer to Barra. 
on to Sangi. A little snow cone on the other end, but Sangi gets enough leather around it to hang on, and it's three up and three down for Jim Bibby. We have played an inning. Glad you could be with us on a Saturday for Pirate Baseball, the Red Hot Buckos, and are they battling? It's going to the second here with the Pirates nothing and the Giants nothing. Good evening, Mr. Thronberry. We saw Bill Madlock there uh, chatting with Manny Sangee. Now, Manny isn't playing that much, uh, and Manny's going to be up third in the inning. They might have been talking about Nepper there, huh, Jim? It could be Nepper or uh, maybe uh, the defense that, that uh, we're going to use uh, or something to do, maybe the throws of Madlock. Sangee might want to know uh, something uh, in the order of how he's going to throw the ball over or whatever. Bill Robinson leading off the second. He's playing right field and batting clean up in the second game. Bends one around for the strike. Robbie is 0 for 4 in the series, has driven in a run. Got a run home last night with a sacrifice fly. So Bob Nepper, who had a banner year last year, but has struggled a bit this year. Foul back. That'll make it 0 and 2. Tomorrow, we'll wrap it up here with John Candelaria against Vita Blue. How about three or four years ago that would have been a classic but blue is not the flamethrower that he was and Candelaria has found that velocity again hasn't he Jim in the last four or five starts he has uh, I think physically candy was having problems but he realizes even now that the hitters maybe are looking a little more for the breaking ball because he was using it more and now he's got the fastball back and he's using it and, and blowing guys away like he used to two balls two strikes Bill Robinson there's no substitute for a good fastball. <laughs> That's going to be in the right center. That ball's going to roll a little bit. Clark, now he's going to challenge him. Clark up with the ball, but Robbie's going to stand with a double. Bill knew, I think, that when he got halfway to first that he had an opportunity to go for two there because he was scooting when he got to first. He wasn't taking a turn and then taking a look. Right, he made ball, up his mind. Right. The ball didn't uh, take off like it normally does in the gaps here. It, uh, but the angle, he could see the, the angle that Clark and uh, Herndon in center field were going after the ball that, that they couldn't really make the play at second base. So take it if they give it to you. Madlock is stepping in looking for his first hit in the series. 0 for 6. This would be a good spot to break in. Get us on the board against Nepper. Ball one. I was kidding Bill Madlock uh, in Los Angeles the other night, Jim, after this pitch. Took something off, one and one. Is but remember play? all those good plays he made in San Diego and L.A.? I said, when we get home, I got a feeling some night you're going to sneak out to Three Rivers in the dark and rip that carpet up and plant grass. <laughs> Tried to go to right field with him, but came up empty, and it's one and two. And he just said, it's just enough slower that he is able to make the play so much better. And that's not a knock on him or anything. It's just a fact of life. That's all. Right, right. He's big enough to admit that, you know, his the bat is what makes him valuable. That's a, that looked like a, uh, that was either a wedge or a sand. <laughs> that was Blast. one of mine off the tee occasionally. <laughs> That's uh, that's now that's the way I hit the ball off the tee when I'm golfing with Justy. And then Dave goes about 20 yards shorter than me. When he hits it, does it do his drives go a hump back like it was the old palm ball? Yeah, if uh, he don't, <laughs> that's when he tries to really crank him. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. Line down toward the left field corner, but it'll hook and go on the seats up above the bullpen. I remember I played one time in spring training with Joe Torre, and I, it's no secret that the players autograph things, and the sporting goods companies, you say you need a dozen balls, they drop off five dozen, and new golf balls are not really a problem. Bouncer toward short, third baseman Evans cuts in front, and will not get him. There's a good indication there of how Bill Madlock can run. People don't give him enough credit for how quick he really is. Well, you remember at home the last time? Parker and Lacey, he got tired of hearing about how they could run. He challenged them and beat them both That's running right. in the outfield. That's right. I was there. I saw it, and I still don't believe it, but he did it. He gets out of the gate quick on him. I think that he gets a little bit of an edge and holds on. All right, Bill Robinson at second. 
And we've got uh, Madlock at first. That's his first hit of the series. Evans talking with Nepper a little bit, and Sangi in the batter. This will be his first at bat in the series. But anyway, we were playing on this course, and it was a water hole, and Torrey hit six brand new balls in the water. Because he didn't care. He had a case of balls, right? Uh -huh. Some there was a foursome waiting to, for us to hit, and they were getting a little anxious. He bunts it up the first base side, and he's going to move the runners. That was what he was up there to do. Nice bunt by Sangin. Boy, and when you're not playing a lot, I would think bunting would be the, one of the hard things to do. It is. Sangi, uh, even though he's got decent, you know, he's the guy that goes up there and swings at pretty much anything that comes around the plate. But Sangi doesn't work on bunting that much. He really uh, hasn't done it. But there's a case right there of coming up and being asked to do something and getting the job done. Here's Dale Barra, certainly one of the first game heroes. Home run and a sacrifice fly. Strike. So one of the guys said to Joe Torrey, said, look, why don't you, you've hit a half a case in the water. Why don't you got to get out an old ball and quit wasting them? And Joe says, I don't have any old balls. <laughs> that sounds like Joe. <laughs> oh, and one, that may be one reason he gave up the game. Strike two on Dale Barra. Nicosia do up next. We've got runners at second and third with one away. We're in the second inning trying to get on the board first against Nepper. Right side of the infield and right field are going to be tough fields here for the next half hour or hour. Backed him off the plate with a fastball and it's one and two because that sun is starting to set back over the third base stands. A low line drive to right field right now no matter who's out there is going to have to really zero in on the ball. Smashed a good cut. You Foul know, Milo, to the left. today so far, I, I, I can't. I'm a little bit amazed at uh, the way Dale's swinging the bat. When we last saw him, as I said earlier, he was struggling, but he looks so much more comfortable and relaxed and aggressive that, uh, again, something like that that may make the whole difference in his career. Well, let's see if we can pick it up here. Notice how much farther away he's got his hands. That's what they worked on him with. Uh huh. Just may be that. Remember, he used to chase a lot of balls about knee high going away from him. Maybe they figure if he get if he's already out there a little. Was looking for, but he just wanted to foul that pitch off or make contact because he wasn't looking for it. I think he had breaking ball in the back of his mind, and he never throws uh, better than average. Two and two with two runners in scoring position. Still got some picture problems. They'll fix them just as soon as they're able. Fouled it off. Still two and two. He's hanging tough. Yep. Against a good pitcher. I don't care if he is nine and nine. If he's available, I got a feeling it'd be a few clubs grab him. Yeah, if you're nine and nine, uh, and you know what kind of ability the guy's got, he can still go out there and, and shut you out, hold you down to a, a low scoring game. And I think they it's no secret uh, the Pirates are a free swinging ball club and I've seen already in this first inning and a half or whatever we've gone through here that we've, they've seen a lot of breaking balls and that's what he's probably going to pretty give us quite a bit of 2-2 two -two to Barra first second strikeout for Nepper and it's two away now it's up to Steve Nicosia With Bibby coming up next, Nepper might uh, put him on. Possible, even though it's early in the game. They're going to put him on. Now Bibbs has really got a chance. Yeah, huh? yeah, he's thinking right now. Bases loaded, grand slam. Could we do it twice in one <laughs> week? Keeson did it Sunday in San Diego. That would be something. <laughs> it was 11 years between them. Was it Al McBean? 68. This will do it now. And Steve Nicosia, who was one for four last night and drove in a run, and who started a nice rally in LA the other night, is at first. And that'll put a pirate on every base with two away and big Jim Bibby with a chance to help himself. And you saw all the runners. Robinson started it with a double. Madlock got an infield hit. Nicosia was just walked intentionally. And Bibby might as well go for it. Strike one, Big Jim Bibby. 
The Giants, by losing the first game today, are 15 under 500. Yeah. Right two. Oh, the way they finished last year. That's a progress chart going in the wrong direction. Yeah, you, you would never expect them to play that bad this year. But they've had their problems, and uh, hopefully they'll get squared away over the winter. Turn it around a little bit next year. Might be some new faces, not necessarily on the field. 0-2, oh bases loaded, two out. Nibs is gone and leaves a man on every base. Second strike out of the inning. Third in the first two innings for Nepper. No runs, two hits, no errors, an intentional walk, and three are left. We played an inning and a half in the nightcap of a doubleheader at Candlestick on a Saturday. Bucks won the opener, but in this one so far, Pirates nothing, Giants nothing. Well, there's a banner, Jim Rooker, that kind of tells the story we talked about in the caravan stops last winter. Super Bowls won it. Let's have the Pirates put another flag up over three rivers. And I know Mr. Wright Rooney, whose ball club will be starting now as the NFL gets underway. And he's talked about it in some of his appearances also saying, hey, let's make it a big year and put two titles there. And that's that banner reflected that thinking. And the Bucks, well, I tell you, this ball club doing an awful lot of things right and a lot of people contributing. And remember, this team's going to be home Monday for a Labor Day doubleheader with the Phillies. Bert Blylevin and Jim Rooker will pitch, and they're going to leave tomorrow. So you'll get back, Jim, in time to get that jet lag out of your system, spend the Sunday evening with the family, and be all ready to come to the ballpark Monday and step into that. I guess you don't know first or second game yet. I, do you? I imagine Bert will pitch a first game. I have neither. They haven't said anything yet, but I I would think that they'd go with Bert. But it's got to help you to be able to go home a day early because we're oh. not going to get the rest of the club not going to get to bed till three o'clock or that may be a little optimistic. Right. <laughs> Daryl Evans, 0 for seven in this series. Jim Bibby working now. We are scoreless. We played an inning and a half. Two hits. Both belong to the Bucks. In the first game, we came from behind for the 34th time this year to win. Challenged him there. He's throwing hard. You know, Milo, I did have a chance to talk to Donnie Robinson about last night and today, and he said that uh, he was really happy with the way he felt. He, he could even pitch today, he said, if he had to. So there's a good indication that he's strong and healthy again. Two balls and a strike, and I, I know Harvey Haddock thought that he had great stuff. He did. He threw hard. And he also felt and Robbie didn't say much about it, but some of the guys on the bench did that he really didn't get any breaks on some pitches that were probably cost him a couple of more walks than he should that's, have had. Yeah, that's true. We can see it up here, but you really can't say too much about it. Yeah. Little looping liner for a hit. Evans gets his first hit in this series. He was 0 for 7. So that's their first hit in the second game. And Mike Ivey will be the batter. Mike 4 for 9 in the series with a homer and four ribbies. The Jim Bibby will be working from the stretch for the first time. He got him three up and three down in the first, but is greeted with a single off Evans' bat to start this inning. And here's Mike Ivey stepping in. And you know, that doubleheader Monday, that's our homestand, folks. <laughs> Montreal just jumped on Cincy with a three and they're leading three to one at the end of an inning got three runs off Tom Seaver. That's a pretty good trick the way he's been pitching. There's Powder River. You can expect uh, I think pretty uh, some high scoring uh, run or games over in that series in Montreal with Cincinnati. They got two teams that can put some runs on the board. Just a lob over to first Bibbs doesn't have a good move. But he's got to work at keeping the runner close because of the big, long upper body and that stretch. And he's improved on that this year. He has. Just the fact that he throws over there will make the runner hesitate a little more. A ball and a strike to Mike Ivey. Evans is a little out of the mold of a Madlock in the fact that he's a doggone good base runner and got better speed than he looks like he has. So you got to watch him. You can't nonchalant him. That 
could be two. Barra Garner Sangi double play. He broke Ivy's bat that still had enough sting to get to Barra, and he and Scraps turned it very, very well. Now, there's two guys who haven't played together for a couple of months. Here there's, we go again. There's a case of just being a professional, knowing what to do when you're asked to do it, and, and being able to play more than one position. You know, we got Phil, Dale, Dog, Foley, these guys that are out there in those two positions, third and second, second and third, that can, any of the four can play any of those positions if they had to, and, you know, with a lot of respect. And with that double play, we now have 128 for the year. One more, and we'll tie what we made all of last year with a month to go, which is another illustration of how we've tightened up that infield because that double play, brother, oh, how it can help you. And it's helped you better, us on numerous occasions. You better believe it. The pitchers, uh, they thrive on good defense. And uh, as good a staff as you can have, a defense just makes them better. Oh, he's humming it. Strike two. You can just see right there, Milo. Bibb is just rearing back and saying, if you've got to prove to me that you can't hit this fastball. And so far, they haven't been able to do too much with it. With Ivy there, I think that was a good heater that he got in on his hands. Whitfield hitting 292 in this series, four for nine with a run batted in. Drove in a run in the first game today. Fouled it off. A Jim Rooker goes off the disabled list tomorrow. And comes right back to pitch in one of the games Monday, but on the disabled on the 16th with a lower back, and that's all you needed was another problem, wasn't right, it? Right, yeah. Well, out of the pan and into the fire, but that's the way I like it. So just go right back out there and go at him. No balls, two strikes, nobody on, two away. Giants batting in the second, we're scoreless. Hey, that was a pretty good pitch. Came over the top with a breaking ball, just did miss. It may be a case of fooling the umpire, too, right there, instead of the hitter, or also. Also, a milestone for Grant Jackson in the first game. Got his 13th save. That's a new career high for him by picking up a couple. And Hooray for Buck. You bet. One last night and one today. Then came back, tried to burn that corner off, just missed again, and it's two and two. Pirates have won 15 of their last 20 games and 26 of their last 37. That's putting things together. Mm -hmm. Two balls, two strikes. Whitfield the batter, LeMaster would be next. Yeah. He wanted that corner, but the pitch before didn't get it. Came right back with it. His second strikeout. No runs, one hit, no errors, double play, nobody left. We've played through two in the second game. Bucks won the opener five to three in this one. Pirates nothing, Giants nothing. Well, there's the gang from Newcastle, one of them here for the series and their Beat 'em Bucks <laughs> banner. Some of the folks from Newcastle, from Chuck Tanner's hometown, that banner was brought today and being held up by Ralph Burtzel and Jackie Juarez. And we thank them for coming out and contributing to the Bucks spirit here. Well, here we go again also with another Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning. And this is it for Mary Ernesty of Scottsdale. Mary, you root the Bucks home here in the third, will you? Because if a home run is hit, Mary Ernesty of Scottsdale, you're going to win $800 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. And you got the top of the order up here, so some guys that can do it. Moreno, Garner, Lacey, Omar leading it off in the third. We're scoreless. Nepper working for the Giants and the first pitch is a ball. Most left-handers, he can't throw the doggone thing straight, can he? <laughs> <laughs> We're not supposed to. It's a left-handers game, you know that, don't you? That's what they say, but it, uh, sometimes I wonder. Fouled off, two and one. I thought if they ever turned this game around, I'd learn to become a third baseman or a shortstop. <laughs> you uh, did not know that you were going to be a big league pitcher when you started because what was it the old Detroit you were in the, that organization as an outfielder that's how I how he became such a great hitter <laughs> hey that's a line drive in the gap 
you know he's going for two if they don't come up with it cleanly and he's got to play in front of him and they didn't come up with it cleanly he's going to come all the way to the hot corner that's just good heads up base running with that play in front of him he was on his own there wasn't he without any doubt uh, Omar knows what he's going to do when he when he sees the ball from the angle, he, right away, he doesn't know if it's in the gap, but as soon as it goes by him, the guy, it's an automatic double, and if he doesn't come up right away with it, right there, he saw him, and he turned it on. And there's only one thing better to see Omar run out of the triple, and that's a inside the parker, because to see him go from home to third, it's just, it's really something to see. The guy can really lay him down. You know who it reminds me of? The guy that, uh, when he had those good years with the Dodgers, Willie Davis. Right, right, he can really go. That's his 12th triple, leads the club, as you would expect him to pitch out. Oh, boy, he got back. And then the throw, although it was not in time, popped away from Evans. Garner will be batting here with a chance to get us on the board and also a chance for Mary Earnestly to go to the Giant Eagle nearest her and load up the truck, folks. $800. Take a few bags and bushel baskets to fill that up on it. Yeah, that fill our, our what? I think uh, our guys can handle that in a couple days. <laughs> Garner popped up in the first inning. Sends a pop into right center. And with Moreno's speed, let's see if we challenge Clark. The throw coming toward the plate. It's going to be a double play. The ball was not hit that deeply. Clark came on. And his throw was right on the money. And we're going to take another look. This is Clark. Clark has one of your real, real good arms. Even though with Omar's speed, you got to send him... It wasn't, the ball wasn't hit that deep, but deep enough for an average outfielder not to throw a guy like Omar out. Clark does have a, a very, very strong arm, and, uh, you know, it's uh, like a good pitcher with a good fastball. There's speed against the arm, and the arm won. Lacey the batter for Mary Earnestly. So with the double play, that brought the giant crowd to life, and they haven't had a heck of a lot to cheer about since the first inning of the first game. Bounce to Evans. Throw across. Lacey outside retired. Well, no home run was hit during this Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but no one ever loses here. Our contestant, Mary Ernesty of Scottsdale, will receive a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available to participating grocers. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes during this game will be worth $900. So in the inning, no runs and a hit. Triple by Moreno, let it off. No errors, double play. Play at the plate, and nobody left. After two and a half, Pirates nothing, Giants nothing. So two innings in a row here. We had a chance to put a dent in the scoreboard against Bob Nepper, but he came up with a good pitching, and he escaped, and so we're still in a nothing-nothing ball game as we go to the bottom of the third. For them, it'll be the bottom third of the order, and that's Johnny LeMaster, the shortstop. He's been playing with a bad leg, and so as a result, the last two series, we haven't seen a lot of him. When he's healthy, he's got some good range, and he's got a strong arm, this kid. He's wearing that shin guard in the left leg also, because he's been fouling some off. And that's an injury that if you don't let it come back and keep fouling him off, Boy, it just gets worse, and Stargell has trouble with that. You wonder if they're going to put this guy on some kind of a weight program because he looks awful frail, and, you you know, playing in the big leagues, it's, it gets pretty rugged. You've got to put, stay pretty strong and healthy. Fouled off. He makes to Colby look like he took the Atlas course. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he stands sideways. You can't find him, this guy. But I would think the... Endurance, you have to have to play a big league schedule that that would cost him something. Very possible. I think Nick wanted to strike there. He may have thought that uh, LeMaster may have ticked it or something there. Yeah. He asked for an appeal finally. The first base umpire acknowledged and said no, he didn't. Usually the longer you wait on that appeal, the less chance you have of getting a favorable result out of the base umpire. Right. He figures that the plate umpire waited that long to finally ask. He must have had a pretty good idea that what he called he wanted to be it. A comebacker for Bibbs. 
Lamaster is out and it is one away as Lamaster was batting for the first time in the series there. Sangian, as you see, playing first. That'll bring up Mike Sadek. Sadek hitting 241 homer, 11 RBIs. We haven't seen much of him. We saw Mark Hill early in the year and lately it's been Little John. Then you saw Sadek do something at home recently with Lavelle on the mound and Sadek's a pretty good little receiver back there and let a ball get by him and we ended up beating him. You got to take those gifts because you're going to lose enough tough ones. Sometimes you got those breaks coming. That's true. I think that's probably uh, something that we've noticed this year too. We've gotten a lot more breaks this year than we have in the past and being able to take advantage of them. Pibbs is just going to go after this guy. It's no secret. I'll tell you this first first couple innings he's just rearing back and letting it go. That was an 88 or 88 and I can uh, think Bibb could probably even go up a little a little higher than that. There was a I don't know what that was but I got to say if the other one was 88 that might have been 90 close uh, three in a row here it is hit it if you can. You know the other day they said Whitson was out here up to 92 and 93 miles an hour so people probably didn't realize Whit was throwing or could throw that hard and he runs it up there good himself. Philadelphia leading Atlanta two to nothing. That's Christensen against Phil Necro. Montreal leading Cincy three to one after an inning. Seaver took some lumps in the first inning. Cubs will be at L.A. later. Cardinals will be at San Diego. New York and Houston getting ready to go. Falcone against James Rodney. And a strike to Nepper who throws left and bats left. Now, the, that's at 37. I'd like to figure now <laughs> that machine made a mistake on something. Maybe it got Nick throwing the ball back. That's the return. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I tell Nikosha that. That's what his throw at second base did last night, wasn't it, when he bounced it in there? Yeah, but boy, the bounce went to the right spot, didn't it? Right in the glove. That's right. 91. Yeah, three up and three down. Four strikeouts in the first three for Bibby, who's got that heater working today. So we played through three in the second game, trying to sweep them here. We beat them five to three, come from behind victory for the Bucks in the opener. So far in this one, nothing up there either side. Pirates nothing, Giants nothing. And now here is a tasty break from Tasty Cake. And a very pleasant uh, good evening from Candlestick Park in San Francisco along with Milo Hamilton and James Rooker. This is Lanny for Terry. Uh, we have an update, by the way. Our ball game is scoreless going to the fourth, and the latest from Montreal, the Expos, have a 7-1 to one lead over the Cincinnati Reds and Tom Seaver after two. I tell you, the Expos got to be a little frustrated, Jim, because they haven't been able to gain on our ball club. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I did not think that they would... Uh, would stay as a challenging ball club this long. I didn't either, Lanny. And uh, even if we, you know, get, get ahead and win this second game, they're still playing great ball and uh, maybe lose a little ground on That's it. right. We get this victory. They lose a half game in the standings, even with a win over Cincinnati. And they're they're leading Tom Seaver and the Reds, as I say, seven to one after two. One ball and one strike on Bill Robinson. Bill playing right field in his second game, facing Bob Nepper. Robinson doubled to right center field in the second. Lines it foul. Robinson to be followed by Madlock and then Sanguian. And fouled away. Jim, we were talking last night, I'm just thinking of it now as I come over, we were talking last night about watching the signs that Nicosia was dealing to Romo. We were ever able to verify that uh, we were a little confused. We thought normally the wiggle's the changeup, uh, but it appeared as if the wiggle for Romo last night was the screwball. That, that's the way it looked to us up here. I didn't bother to ask, uh, but even guessing, I'd say it, it would have to be. That did appear to be the case. Nepper gets his fourth strikeout. One down in the Pirates' fourth inning. It's a scoreless ball game. Pirates won the first game five to three. A lot of things to highlight about that first game. 
And I guess one of the most amazing things and the unusual thing about that first game, Kent to Colby playing left field and catching the final out of the game. Matlock had an infield single his first time up in this game and lines it to left, so he's two for two. Hit number four for the Pirates. Score fourth inning, Bob Nepper against Jim Bibby in the matchup of this second game after the Pirates won the first game five to three. Here's Manny Sangian. Sangian with a sacrifice bunt in the second. Manny's playing first base. This turned out to be a nice day, Lanny, with the overcast this morning. The it sun is out now. Has been a beautiful day. I thought about 3.30, 4 o'clock it was going to get windy and cold, but not been the case. Fouled off, and it's no balls and two strikes on San Guillen. has 20 stolen bases on the year. Getting more of a chance to run with the Pirates than he has with other clubs. And he's going here. A ball and a stolen base. So it's number 21 for Bill Madlock and he's in scoring position with one away here in the fourth. He picked a good pitch there. That's an off-speed uh, pitch breaking ball so a good jump and the guy uh, Sadek made a good recovery and put the throw really right there. Madlock looked like he jammed his thumb or something coming across there. Andrews had tough trouble with the throws. He was kind of somersaulting over the runner Madlock. Ball gets away from Sadek and Madlock's going to move down to third. On the wild pitch, it puts Madlock at third with one away here in the fourth. He's rubbing his wrist there. He, he may have jammed his wrist as he uh, went in a second base on that slide. Well, let's hope it's uh, nothing that would pull him out of the lineup. We've already got Parker, Milner, Stennett, and Foley scratched from our starting lineup because of injuries. Their infield is up. It's the fourth inning scoreless game. They're going to try to choke off this runner from third. One away in the inning. For right center, Madlock will score one nothing Pirates. Sanguian heading for second. Herndon's throw back in, not in time. No many doubles to right center to drive in Bill Madlock, and it's a one nothing Pirate lead. Nipper gets that ball up a little bit and out over the plate. Where Sangi anywhere in that area, forget it. He's going to hit the ball somewhere, and as he does there to right center, allows him to get into second base. We're cashing in now. We had a couple opportunities and didn't get them before. Now we got the we got that lead run in. Dale Barra, his first day back with the Pirates. Had a home run in the first game. He's over one in the second game. One thing about this uh, 1979 Pirate Club, though they'll miss opportunities from time to time as they have early in this game. They come at you enough time that eventually they're gonna they're gonna break through. That's true. The way they the way our guys swing the bat. Uh, if they're hitting the ball hard, generally sometimes you may, you know, catch a few, catch a few, and we have those games where we hit them at them all the time, but believe me, uh, sooner or later we're going to get you. Dale Barra playing shortstop in both ends of the doubleheader. Foley's got a groin injury and stented a bad ankle, so Garner's playing second and Barra at short. one nothing Pirates lead in the second game. Count two and two. Sangian after the RBI double, he's at second base with one out. Facing Nepper in the Giants. Fouled back out of play. some 
good pitches there. The runner, Shanguian's running, 2-2 pitches fouled off. One away, Bucks had Manny Shanguian breaking for third. What do you think, you get the sign or was he running on his own? I would think he probably went on his own that time, and it looked like he may have the base stolen, but with two strikes, Dale can't afford to take anything, uh, you know, so he fouled it off. And well, it's gotta be tough right now, too, with that shadow out there. You get a good look at it here now from our field level home plate camera. Give you some idea what Bear is looking at. Bounce the right side, Andrews, Bear hands it, throw to first, and Bear is out. Sanguian moves to third on the play. They are now two away in the Pirate fourth inning. Now the 2-2 pitch just at the bouncer to the right side. That's one of the tougher plays an infielder will have to make. Come in like that, bare hand a ball, and throw across his body as he's going the other way, really, away from first base. That's the only way he's going to make that play. If he tries to glove it, Dale would have probably beat it out. So a good play by Andrews to get Barra. Pirates have Sanguian at third with two away in the batter, Steve Nicosia. He was walked intentionally the first time up. 1-0 Pirates lead as the Buckos bat in the fourth inning. Pitcher Bibby due up next. Sadek may have gone out and asked him what he wanted him to throw. Popped up first base side, and Ivy makes the catch over the shoulder. Fine play by the San Francisco first baseman. Mike Ivy running away on the Nakusha pop. The Pirates in the fourth inning take the lead in the second game. The Bucks get one run. On two hits, RBI double by Sanguian, and then the Ivy's catch on Nakosha's pop closes out the Pirate fourth. After three and a half in tonight's uh, second game, Pirates are leading one to nothing, and we'll be right back. Pirates will be meeting in their final showdown of the year at Three Rivers Stadium this coming Monday, September the 3rd for a big Labor Day doubleheader. Pennant race will be heating up as we turn a corner into that Labor Day uh, period, and it's the final month. Crucial doubleheader with the Phillies, your chance to, uh, last chance to see the Phillies in 1979. So come on out to beautiful Three Rivers Stadium, Labor Day, September the 3rd, and Ruth the Buck goes on to victory in both games against the Phillies. If you'd like more ticket information, the number to call is 323-1150. Phillies with the uh, new skipper Danny Ozark fired yesterday by the Philadelphia Phillies. Jim Bibby to the mound with a 1-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Bibby faced the minimum number of Giants uh, the first time through at nine. Gave up just the one hit to Darrell Evans and Evans was erased on the front end of a double play. Bibby with five strikeouts in the first three innings. They come out here at all ages, right? Start them early. Well, I'll tell you what, baseball is a great sport to bridge generation gaps. So much knowledge of this great game has been passed on from father to son, from grandfather to grandson. Here's Larry Herndon. He struck out on the first. The girls have gotten into it now, you know. Let's not slight them. Uh, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. By the way, Bibby's single game strikeout high this year is seven. Did it against Houston in the Astrodome on July the 10th. He already has five. Throwing as hard as he has been early in the game. He's established his fastball. There's no doubt about that. So he may go to breaking balls occasionally a little more here, but I think right to when he has to, he's going to give him the heat. Bouncer to Barra, and to Sanguian, and Herndon is out. One away in the fourth. One nothing, Pirates are leading. As I came over after three, I uh, noticed that you guys had that uh, radar gun that you were keeping an eye on. What were some of the figures you were getting on Bibby? Well, we got an 88 mile an hour on him, and I said he could probably run it up there, and as he finished off the inning, it was at 91, so... You know, that's uh, that's throwing it up there pretty good. 
Yeah, Rob Andrews is the batter. He's 0 for 1. He struck out on the first. I'll tell you what, if they ever use that machine when I'm pitching, I'm going to sue them. <laughs> Well, you probably stay at the speed limit, don't you? 55, somewhere around there? Right. I don't want to uh, get pulled over the side for doing something <laughs> wrong. Popped up. Nikosha and Sanguian coming near the giant dugout, but it's back out of play. Almost looked like Andrews was saying to Eric Gregg, the umpire, he's really bringing it. <laughs> he's saying it sounds good. We understand from downstairs that was 87 miles per hour that last pitch. One out, nobody on. Bottom of number four. Oh, base hit. And Andrews is on. Talk about speeders. Well, he's lucky he got out of that with his life. There's a few people that are glad that could that took uh, that kind of a hop. Uh, is it? just viciously goes over Phil's head there. Don't worry, Carol. He'll be all right. Looked like a goaltender with a kick save, didn't he? <laughs> right. Get down. Andrews is on with one away on the bottom of the fourth. Pirates leading one to nothing. Got a good one going here. This is act two of this afternoon's doubleheader from San Francisco and Jack Clark the batter. He's 0 for 1. Garner shading over near the second base bag. 87, so he's still running it up there. I tell you, I'm watching Nikoshi give the signs, and I noticed this the last time Clark is up. He's closed up so much that I think he's making you think you have to pitch him away, but if you watch just before the pitch is made, his back foot, he'll kind of open up real quick looking for the ball inside, and here it looks like Nick is going to go away with him. Right? Fouled off, it's 0-2. He is. He's looking inside, and I think that's probably why he's uh, become such a, a, a strong home run hitter uh, already in his uh, first couple of years in the, in the big leagues. Uh, these big hitters, you have to pitch them tight, but Clark has got such a quick bat, and he's uh, he's a smart kid, I'll tell you, making you think he's throwing, you know, going to go out of way, the way he's closed up in front there. Now, there's a slider away. But uh, he'll open up the front there and try to get make sure he gets around in time. Yeah, There's a step off that one. The difference between a fastball and a slider is uh, 10 miles an hour about right now. Right. I wasn't going to argue for one mile an hour. Well, we'll give him, let's see, a dollar over the speed limit. Uh, <laughs> Pirates leading one to nothing, Jim Bibby. Facing the Giants and Jack Clark. Foul back out of play, and Nikosha takes a look, but it's Beckham on the patrons. The base hit by Rob Andrews here in the fourth inning, only the second hit of the game for the Giants. Now, Nick gave a fastball away, and Bibby dropped down a little bit, and it caused the ball to ride in. But again, Clark is daring you to throw him inside when he closes up like that. And uh, he's really trying to outsmart you. And, and if you don't get it in far enough and he opens up, uh, you can see why he's got 20-some home runs. And here, here's the slider. We're playing a guessing game right here. And so far, we're guessing right by keeping the ball away from him. I think... Uh, had we get that ball, now maybe Bibb wants to talk to Nick about it. First game, Chuck Tanner pulled a big move. He put Kent to Colby in left field when he brought Grant Jackson on as he wanted Teak to pitch to Ivy if, if Jackson did not get Evans to end the game. So, well, I'll tell you, the Skipper of the Bucks got to be right up there among prime candidates when they ballot for manager of the year. Here's the pitch now to Clark. Left center, base hit. Moreno in the gap. Andrew will stop at third. And Jack Clark at second base. Well, the Giants have runners at second and third. One away here in the fourth inning. Clark doubling to left center. 
had two hits in the first game of the doubleheader. Now, Darrell Evans, the batter, left-handed hitter, will be stepping in. Pirates are leading one to nothing. First base open here in one away. And Bibby will work from the full windup. to the left. Paid attendance this afternoon 25,551. <laughs> Bibby with little trouble against the Giants in the first three innings and struck out five batters in the first three. But now here in the fourth the Giants have something going with one away. Runners at second and third against Bibby. the center Moreno draws a beat on it makes the grab Andrews scores it's a 1-1 game Clark moves to third on the fly ball Mike Ivey the battery bounced into a double play in the second batting 313 on the year. Keep in mind at last report the Expos were leading the Reds 7 to 1 in the third in Montreal. Tom Seaver was knocked out in the second inning of that game. Manny Sarmiento came on. Clark at third. He had a double. Two balls and no strikes on Ivy. said when Bibb has to go go at him that's what he's going to do and it's with the fastball and that's what he's doing right now bottom of the fourth inning second game of the doubleheader Pirates won the first game five to three ran the fastball in missed off the plate it's three and one It's a full count. Good luck at their first baseman Ivy facing Jim Bibby. With a runner at third and two away. And we're in the bottom of the fourth. Three and two now. Let's see what Bibby comes with here. pitch. Matlock across to Sangin and the Giants settle for one. San Francisco gets a run on two hits. Run scored on the sacrifice fly by Darrell Evans scoring Rob Andrews. After four innings of play Pirates won and the San Francisco Giants won. Well we 
We've turned the quarter into September. A lot of big dates left on the September schedule for you and a big one at Three Rivers Stadium, September the 16th, when the Pirates take on the New York Mets at a 105 game. It'll be Pirates Tasty Cake Ski Cap Day. It really is an impressive cap. It comes in uh, knit and the pirate colors of black and gold, just appropriate for uh, what's coming up in the fall months. So that's on September the 16th as we take on the New York Mets, a 105 game against New York that day, and it's Pirates Tasty Cake Ski Cap Day. And our our helper today is Pete Bamford. Pete, thanks very much for helping us out, showing our fans at home this beautiful ski cap. As I say, it uh, comes in uh, black and gold, as you can see, and uh, perfect for what comes ahead in the Tri-State. Thank you, Peter. We're going to go to the fifth inning. Bob Nepper wrapped up in a 1-1 ball game with our Pirates. about those big uh, September dates coming up. You might want to be listening for... Oh, wait a minute. i got to stop here. Sanguian must have grabbed a new shirt or something and uh, almost looked like Manny was putting his shirt on backwards in the dugout. Here's Bibby coming out for the fifth. Bibby struck out on the second. He's going to lead off the fifth. As I was saying, uh, the big September date's coming up. The final 11 home dates of September included in those 11 dates, starting with the Cardinal Series, all part of a brand-new general admission fan plan that you'll want to check on. Pirates one run, five hits. Giants one run, three hits. Nepper with four strikeouts so far. Right side to second baseman Andrews, and Bibby is out one away. Omar Moreno had a triple in the third. He's one for two. from Candlestick Park. The Pirates won the first game 5-3 to three as Keeson won his 10th and Jackson picked up his 13th save. Jim Rooker, as uh, we watched Bob, Bob Nepper uh, this afternoon, uh, we know from history he does not like to throw a lot of pitches. He can get a job done in very few pitches, but what's really his trump suit? Well, his control naturally, I mean, well, let's say his control over us and uh, the breaking ball, he's always been very effective with us when he's got his breaking ball over and got ahead of our hitters. And uh, then he can mix his pitches in pretty good. But uh, so far today, he hasn't really been able to do that as well. Oh! And, then he, and he just did it. He just did it right there, strike <laughs> one. But that's what he needs to do. He's got a good breaking ball, and, he, and he's so he's got a very fluid motion, and the ball gets up on you quicker than it you think it does when he throws a fastball. Comes with it again, and this is outside one and one. Bob Nepper, born in Akron, Ohio, now makes his home in. Foster City, California. Sixty-eight miles per hour on that mileage gun. It's an ironic difference from Jim Bibby's work. Well, there you have pitch, a. Wasn't it? Yeah, it's got a bigger arc too, and it takes a little more time for it to get up there, as opposed to a good hard slider. Fifth inning, 1-1 one, one ball game. Breaking pitch again. Stayed high, 2-2. Two and two. Get a good look from our center field camera right into Mike Sadek as he drops the fingers for Bob Nepper. There it is. Curveball all the way. He doesn't even give him location. Struck and when you out. throw a good one like that, it doesn't matter. And a strikeout number five for Bob Nepper, two away in the Pirate fifth. Other games tonight, Montreal leading Cincinnati seven to one after four. David Palmer is pitching for the Expos. Seaver gave way to Sarmiento in the second. Houston leading New York one nothing after one. The Astros could reclaim first place if they win tonight and the Reds lose. Pete Falcone for New York and James Rodney Richard for Houston. is 0 for 2 in the second game. Phillies and Braves are tied 2-2 in Atlanta, Georgia after 4. Phillies had taken a 2-0 lead, but then Dale Murphy hit a 2-run homer in the bottom of the 4th, and 
Murphy's been playing long ball lately for Atlanta. Christensen pitching for the Phillies, Phil Necro for the Atlanta Braves. Later starts here in California, Chicago at Los Angeles, and St. Louis at San Diego. Two strike pitch. And misses inside. Struck him out. Doesn't come with the same speed of Jim Bibby, but nevertheless, Nepper has six strikeouts as he sets the Pirates down in order in the fifth. So we're halfway through game two. Pirates beat the Giants five to three in the first game, the second game all tied up at one apiece, and uh, keep smiling, we'll be right back. Pirate fans, here's a big break for you. Pirate general admission fans especially. The Pirates have come up with a plan just for you. Until September the 10th, the Pirates will be selling the general admission playoffs fan plan. It guarantees you the right to purchase lower level reserved general admission tickets for the playoffs and World Series. All you have to do is buy one general admission ticket for each of the Pirates' 11 September home games, and you guarantee yourself that you'll see every playoff and World Series game played in Pittsburgh in 1979. It only costs $26. That's the general admission playoff fan plan. And the number to call to order yours is 323-5080. Whitfield leading off the bottom of the fifth, and he bounces it to Garner one away. That number again, 323-5080 to call and order your general admission playoff fan plan. Whitfield out number one in the fifth. Here's shortstop Johnny Lamaster. We're in the bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 ball game. Jim, you mentioned that the first three Bibby established his fastball, and, and you mentioned at the start of the fourth inning that he might try to mix things up a little bit, and he ran into a little trouble in the fourth. Uh, did you see what you expected to see in the fourth? Well, the key, I don't know what Clark hit and what the location, him getting that double. And uh, that may have been uh, the big problem. Clark, uh, he's capable of hitting anything up there, and if, especially if you don't, if he's looking in the area. And I think the ball may, you know, uh, been in on him where he was setting him up for, uh, setting us up for. So uh, he still, what he did, he did establish his fastball and uh, even that inning there, throwing it real hard so far. This inning, I should say. And, uh, you know, you can't really complain. He's only given up three hits, and uh, he's, he's still coasting along one-to-one. -one. Uh, keep it close like this, and the Bucks will break it loose. First two outs of the fifth inning on ground balls. Mike Sadak, the hitter. You see, there, he, they can't even handle that ball in on Matt Hart. He's running it up there, and, and they just... That's a one-handed defensive swing, uh, fighting it off him. Uh, he's just glad that... Uh, you know, that, uh, that he, he was lucky just to get the bat on the ball. Foul tip, strike two. Mike Sadek facing Jim Bibby. Bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 ball game. Pirates won the first game 5-3. to three. So the Bucks have now won four in a row. The Pirates on this road trip are six and two. Struck him out. Sada goes down on strikes for the second time, and that is punch out number six for Jim Bibby. So the Giants go without a struggle in the fifth. Third time of the game that Bibby, and he must look like a blur to the San Francisco Giants, third time that he set the Giants down in order. After five, a 1-1 ball game at Candlestick. The next part of our game from Candlestick Park, sponsored in part by Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And in part by Mellon Bank. You get a good feeling for saving at Mellon Bank. Totals after five. Pirates one run, five hits, no errors. The Giants one run, three hits, and no errors. We hope that you'll join us on Monday when the Pirates...
Everett family entertains the Philadelphia Phillies in a Labor Day doubleheader. Consider yourself part of the family and join us on Monday at a 105 start against Philadelphia. We are ready to start the sixth, and Lee Lacey will be stepping in. Take a look at what else has happened in the American League tonight. Texas beat Boston 5-4 to four in an afternoon game. Kansas City beat the Yankees 9-8. to eight. George Brett now Collins had home runs for the Royals. Seattle beat Toronto 3-2 to two in 10. Oakland in the 10th inning beat Detroit 6-3. to three. Tonight after four, now going to the fifth, the Angels are leading Cleveland by a score of four to nothing, and Carney Lansford has hit three home runs for the California Angels tonight. Baltimore leading Minnesota one nothing after four. Milwaukee at Chicago not yet underway. Lee Lacey 0 for two as he steps in against Bob Nepper in this 1-1 ball game. Lacey batting in the number three spot playing left field. Well, quite a few Pirates out of the starting lineup this weekend because of injuries. Base hit. The master tried to dive off and uh, cut it down, but Lacey gets the base hit, and that is hit number six for the Pirates. Well, he really struck this pitch. He did. He got a curveball out over the plate there. It wasn't that bad a pitch. Lee just went out and got it. You got to give him credit. Uh, the guy almost flagged it down, but he wouldn't have probably thrown him out anyway had he caught the ball. So Lacey is on. He'll take it. We'll take it. And Bill Robinson steps in one for two. He doubled in the second. One one ball game. Going to run him here Jim. Nope. Base hit right center field. Lacey on his way to third and the Pirates have runners at the corners and nobody out in the sixth inning. They're off and running. Bill Robinson gets his second into the game. So the Bucks setting up shop hoping to go in front here in the sixth. Well I said hold them close and we're going to break loose. Uh, that's the way we've been playing ball. We've come back uh, from two runs down three runs down. The guys, uh, the, the you know, the ones that are out there pitching, the starters, uh, they really, Altabelli's wondering, you know, how many we're going to get this inning. We'll let you know in a few minutes, Joe. But uh, it's comfortable to know, you know, if you go out there and do your job, these guys are going to go out there and hack at the other pitcher, and, uh, you know, you got a pretty good, better than average chance of scoring some runs. No doubt about this club being confident about its ability to score runs in the second half of the ball game. Madlock, two for two in the second game. Runs going to score. Evans gets the force out at second. That's all. Lacey scores, and the Pirates take a 2-1 lead. They decided to concede the run here. So they get the force out on Robinson. As Lacey scores, Madlock will get credit for the RBI, and that will be his 73rd of the year. That's a lot. Ivy's over there at first base talking to Mad Dog, and I know he's saying, how come you didn't hit like that when you were over here? <laughs> what a difference a team makes. Little Madlock at first and one away. Here's Manny Sanguin, and he's one for one. See if they run Madlock in this situation. Leading two to one. Ball in the dirt. Madlock will move down to second base on the wild pitch. Makes the turn and holds on. Second wild pitch thrown by Bob Nepper in the game. 2-1 Pirates lead. The Sadek tried to block that. He he did uh, all he could, but Nepper, when he's got a good curveball working and going down that good, there's just not much you can do. Watch, it just goes right down in the dirt. He really doesn't have any chance at all. In fact, that short hopped him by quite a bit. Body in front of it or not, I doubt if he could have been able to hold the ball in front of him. Runner in scoring position for Sanguin. Sixth inning. Second game of the doubleheader. And Nepper falls behind Sanguin 2-0. Oh. We mentioned the number of injuries. Milner was supposed to start this second game as he did the first, but because of a knee injury, he's out. So Sanguin's playing first. As Madlock leads off second. Here he comes. Oh, no strike. Chance. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Madlock is in safe at third. He went in standing up. That was one heck of a play by Sadek. He may have made the right 
or may have thrown him out had Evans hung on to the ball. Look, at he's just casually, the, that's a good decoy there, and he gets a walk in lead, break, and then he, the throw is right on the bag. If the ball beats him there, and uh, Evans just can't hold it. Great camera work, too, by a crew here in San Francisco. They had Madlock sneaking off the base. You looked right into his eyes as he broke for third. One out of the inning. So a chance to drive another run, but the ball is hit to Ivy. He'll take the unassisted put out. Sanguin is out two down. And Madlock holds the third. What was that? That was a 2-1 pitch, wasn't it? And it yeah. He got a ball up. Sangi uh, chased it a little bit. Now here's Dale Barra. Dale had a home run in the first game and two RBIs. He is 0 for 2 in this game. Pirates leading 2 to 1 in the top of the sixth inning. By the way, Madlock got credit for the stolen base going to third, so he has 22 stolen bases on the year, two in this game. Behind 2 0. Barra playing shortstop. Stenner was supposed to start the first game at second base, but Rennie bothered by a, an ankle sprain. Parker's out with a knee injury, and Tim Foley's got a groin injury. But that's been the byword for this Pirate Ball Club. Pencil a name into the lineup and someone ready to take the job and pick up the slack. Two and two on Barra. Two outs, sixth inning. Madlock at third. Full count. Madlock. Sitting on the front door, and we're waiting for a payoff pitch from Napper to Barra. Third baseman Evans across to Ivy. Ivy cannot dig it out. Barra is safe, and the Pirates take a three to one lead. That is an error charged on Darrell Evans. safe at first Madlock scores on the play the throw by Evans was uh, in the dirt Ivy tried to dig it out but could not well there's uh, you know a case of us getting a break and we, as a result right now we've got one run out of it you never know what can happen even though there are two outs Steve Nikosha steps in throw to first Barra back safely Nikosha intentionally walked in the second then was retired on a fine play by Ivy in foul territory in the fourth Throw to first. They're thinking about Barra here. Number eight hitter Nikosha in the batter's box. Pitcher Bibby due up next. We're leading three to one. know if Dale's going to go, but he's just letting him know that he's thinking about him. Throw to first by Sadek, and Barrow gets back. We might be seeing Willie Stigel defensively uh, when we go to the bottom of the sixth. Willie's been loosening up down this left field line. Now with the lead, Chuck might make some changes to strengthen the defense a little bit. It's 2-0 and on Nakosha. 3-1 Pirates lead. Strike, throw to first, Barrow back. Well, Sadek appears to be a kind of catcher that likes to throw a lot. He's tried a couple, or a pick off at third base, and now he's tossed down to first a few times. Nakosha with a fly ball down the right field line. Clark coming over, and right at the line. Jack Clark has it. Pirates pick up a pair of runs. Two runs on three hits. RBI by Madlock in the inning, and then on the error, 
Madlock was able to score our third run. So after five and a half in the second game of today's doubleheader, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates three and the San Francisco Giants one, and we'll come back to Candlestick in just a moment. Those magnificent men and their flying machines. Let's take a run. Got you, Dad. Some guys just can't get enough of flying, even when they fly for a living. Call them dedicated, call them perfectionists. In the friendly skies, we call them Captain. Those magnificent men and the flying machines, they go up the up into the friendly skies, fly the friendly skies. You don't move mountains, you go through them. And all it takes to carve a tunnel out of a mile of hard rock is steel and sweat and dynamite. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. to Greensburg during the week of September 9th through the 15th KDKA TV will be saluting the town of Greensburg on Wednesday September the 12th from 8 to 9 p.m. the residents of Greensburg are inviting uh, invited rather to a community forum which will be held at the Palace Theater in downtown Greensburg residents are encouraged to come meet some of the KDKA TV personalities and management and to ask questions regarding our television programming that's Wednesday September the 12th from 8 to 9 p.m at the Palace Theater in downtown Greensburg. We're moving to the bottom of the sixth inning, and uh, Willie Stargell has indeed come in the ball game. He'll play first base. Taking the spot vacated, Manny Sanguian will leave. So Willie is in the number six spot of the Pirate batting order. And the latest from Montreal, the Expos having... Uh, Got three runs in the first and four in the second. They lead Cincinnati seven to one going to the sixth inning. Seaver started Sarmiento in the second. Manny gave way to Mario Soto in the fifth. And David Palmer pitching for Montreal with that seven to one lead. But as we mentioned earlier, the frustrating thing for the Expos would have to be that if they win tonight and keep their their winning ways moving, they have a chance of losing a half game in the standings if the Pirates sweep this win bill. That's got to affect them a little bit, uh, Lanny. As good as they have been playing, and uh, they're thinking, what do we have to do to get back uh, within? They're in, within striking distance, but they're they're wondering, you know, how much better do we have to play? And they, they really can't play much better either. One ball and one strike, and Bob Nepper, giant pitcher, leading off the sixth inning. Pirates leading 3-1. to one. I would think a big plus for that Montreal ball club would be that they have got a few guys on that club who have been in the drive, have been in playoff situations or in September pennant drives, Tony Perez and Duffy Dyer and Davey Cash. True, Cash and Dyer not playing a lot, but just having them around I would think would help. It does mentally help out uh, the attitude. But the thing is, they haven't really had any real serious injuries as opposed to a lot of the other clubs in the division and the uh, contenders. And there's a bunt that uh, Bibb makes a good play on. But that that's true. Uh, the thing that I'm wondering, if, if an Ellis Valentine were out for a week or two, or a Cormarty or Dawson, somebody in that lineup every day, that would, I think, have a very, very big effect on him. Good close-up of Jim Bibby. <laughs> Bibb react good. He had his eyes on that ball all the way. I got it, I got it. You're seeing a good one here this afternoon from Candlestick Park, along with Milo Hamilton and Jim Rooker. This is Lanny Terry, along with our producer-director, Brian Seip, as we... Send it back east from California. First game, the Pirates won five to three. And I guess if I were to highlight uh, the first game for you, I could do it this way. Keeson won his 10th. Jackson picked up his 13th save. Barra hit his second home run of the year. Stargell hit two home runs. And Kenta Colby, who pitched in the first game, finished the game in left field and made the final out of the game. He caught a Darrell Evans fly ball in left field. And that's what we'll hear most of <laughs> the rest of the day. I was saying earlier, 
I want to talk to Ken when he's about 45 or 50 years old and he's telling his grandson about the diving catch he made in the final out in a giant game back in 79. Well, they're going to have to give him the scorecard with his name penciled in because that's what he's going to have to have for proof. Nobody's going to believe him. I got the Western Union or the sports ticker for him. They sent it all over the country. <laughs> off. I think most fans are familiar that there's a special ticker service that uh, feeds information across the country and what they sent across was Jackson pitching for Pittsburgh ninth inning. No to Colby moved to left field still eligible to pitch and then later sent the line score and totals on the game and indicated that to Colby in left field caught the last out. Well that just shows Peak's versatility. Yes. That's the word I was looking for. Well, that could have been about an 80 mile an hour slider right there. That Bibby gets his seventh strikeout. Ooh, he grunted, I guarantee you. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, sir, buddy. Send me up somebody else up there. Next. Well, Jim Bibby, when he punches that time card, he's ready to do his work out there. Seven strikeouts for Bibby. We're in the sixth inning. Nobody on two down. 3 1 Pirates lead. And Here's Rob Andrews. You know, I, I'm curious now as to how hard he's throwing. That's a high fastball up out over the plate that anybody you think can hit. So you, he's got to be throwing ex exceptionally hard to continuously throw it by these guys like this. He's just saying, you know, give me somebody else to throw the ball to in there. That's confidence. Take a little break here, a little oxygen, rear back, and run it up there about another 93 miles an hour. You're almost expecting to see Obi-Wan Kenobi any minute, and he's saying, <laughs> the force be with you. Boom, Bibby blows it by you. Oh. Ah. Hello. Now that helps, too. I like that. That's not intentional there. Bib is throwing so good right now that he's just cutting it loose. Yeah. As Nikosia one hands it and says, Did I catch that ball? That's just a matter of deciding squatters' rights right there. Yeah. <laughs> if he throws him a sidearm curve right now, I guarantee you I don't like his chances up there as a hitter. That's just wondering how deep is my valley. He's just, just <laughs> boom, move back. One and two on Ra and, uh, Rob Andrews. Garner takes it, flips to Stargell, and that is all. The Giants are gone in order in the sixth. Bibby's had four, one, two, three innings in the game, and after six, Jim Bibby, who's done just about everything tonight, including catch bunt pops out in front of the plate. Pirates are leading three to one, and Milo will be back to join you when we go to the seventh inning. For the first time in Pittsburgh, see the original Broadway star, Richard Kiley, in the all-awards winning musical, Man of La Mancha. I just hope my mascara holds out. Dulcinea, Dulcinea. I think it was one of the most moving experiences I've ever had. Left me weak and weepy. Richard Kiley and Man of La Mancha. Seats now at the Stanley Theater starting September 5th for a limited time only. See Man of La Mancha now. It may be your last chance. Well, we're getting ready to go to the seventh inning in the second game, and the Buncos trying to go for two and knowing full well they need to do it because Montreal's got Cincinnati by the throat. They knocked Tom Seaver out in a hurry. And they're leading Cincy 7-1. to one. And as we go to the seventh inning in this one, Milo Hamilton back with Jim Rooker. And we've got another chance for somebody at home to win some groceries from Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. And our contestant, Jessica L. Gardner, she can root the Bucks home during this half of the seventh. $900 worth. And big Jim Bibby. 
who's pitching a heck of a game here, is going to lead it off against Nepper. There's a high bounce. Third baseman in behind the mound. Throws. And just did get him. Big Bibbs was hustling down that line. I tell you, we talked about it when I was on with you earlier. Bibby's got that good heater. He has stayed with it. He's got a strikeout pitch today, hasn't he? He does. Uh, and we've been we've been talking about it quite a bit. That you're going to see, I'm sure, the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. As long as he stays strong, and in this weather and the conditions as they are today, uh, other than just using up energy, uh, the elements aren't going to interfere with it at all. All right, the batter will be Omar Moreno. Omar had a triple in the third inning. Around that triple, struck out a couple times. He's had three for 12 in the series and driven in a couple of runs. Pirates have out hit the Giants seven to three, leading the score three to one. We won the opener five to three. We've had RBIs by Sanguian before he left, Madlock, and then they gave us the third run when Evans threw a changeup to Ivy on Barra's ball and Madlock scored. Because it wasn't that tough a chance, really. Not really. Uh, Evans doesn't have a, a, you know, let's say a, he's got a good arm. It's average enough, but uh, it's a play that he should have made. Phillies and Atlanta are 3-2 now Philadelphia. Murphy had hit a home run earlier to tie it. That's a strike. So Christensen's got the lead again over Phil Necro, 3-2. The ball game in Atlanta. James Rodney Richard got a run. He's leading one to nothing. There's a bouncer down the right side. Boy, James Rodney's been pitching the last month. One run might be enough in the way they play in that dome. Remember later, the Dodgers will host the Cubs and the Padres will be playing the Cardinals in San Diego. Laid off of it that time. He'd struck out on that pitch earlier. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on. Seventh inning. Got it off the end of the bat. Omar stepping back a moment as Nepper looks in. Nepper really hasn't pitched that bad again. He's been pretty consistent today. Uh, he's as in the past. He's been tough on us. Ball low outside. All right, now it's full. Remember tomorrow, we'll be on radio only and sure hope that you'll join us when Candelaria goes after his 13th. He'll draw by the blue. Payoff pitch. Just struck out the antelope for the third time. That's seven strikeouts, and both of these pitchers now have come up with seven Ks. And that's going to bring up Garner, who has popped to short, flied to right on the front end of a double play when they tried to bring Moreno home after a triple, hoping that Garner's ball was going to be a sacrifice fly, but Clark's good throw nailed Omar at the plate. Then the last time, Garner was a strikeout victim swinging. Ball one. I'll tell you one thing that's really been surprising here today is the fact that we really haven't had any of that constant wind. There's a shot that hit Evans' glove and hit it so hard it went right out to the left fielder. That is hit. That ball was hit. Oh, you got to be. <laughs> Realize, had he maybe deflected that higher, the outfielder may have had a chance to catch. That ball went out to the outfield by, by a good margin. We're going to get another look at the swing. Gar is right on it. You can't hit a ball on the line any harder than that. Boy, that was right in his wheelhouse, too, wasn't that's it? That's right. If that... Phil gets that ball up, it's going to go out of the park here. That's right. Yep. Jessica Gardner, Lacey's batting for you as we play Giant Eagle Home Run Sweepstakes. We're up to $900 worth. Lacey had a hit in the sixth inning and scored our second run. He's one for three as Scraps leads off at first. Good pitch there. That's when you cross the T and dot the I when you hit that spot. <laughs> well, we'll occasionally do that. We'll take them as pitchers go. 
but I'd rather have Lee turn one of those around. He hit that one. You may have called it, Mr. Rooker. He turned it around. He did. Wind and all. Home run for Lacey. It comes with two away, and it also means that Jessica Gardner is going to win the Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes worth $900 in groceries. Jessica, back up the truck. You're also going to get 10 Tasty Cake <laughs> family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available at your grocer. Our next sweepstakes inning will be worth $100. That'll be in St. Louis next week. And hit, look at this. There's a high fastball into Lee's wheelhouse. Another and mistake. That's right. He got it up. And uh, Jessica L. Gardner is not going to forget Lee Lacey for more reasons than one. There'll be some groceries on the table. On Lee. Have them on Lee. That makes it 5-1. to one, Runs 4-5 and five scoring. There's a bouncer past the mound off Robinson's bat. LeMaster throws and got him. Good play by LeMaster. So short to first takes care of Robinson, but two runs are in on two hits. Single by Garner. Lacey hit one over the left center field fence. No errors, nobody left. The crowd getting up some 25,500 for their second stretch of the day. And as you watch Lacey's ball go out that gave us two more, this is the new score. Pirates five, Giants one. Hey, how'd you like some free gasoline when you fill up? <laughs> I like it a lot. Change to Quaker State Sterling Motor Oil. You're telling me an oil change? We'll get you better gas mileage. See, Quaker State Sterling is a different kind of oil. Specially blended to lubricate better than regular oils. Less friction, so your engine will work less hard. And use less gasoline. It'll be like getting extra gas for free. Change to Quaker State Sterling. It's like getting free gas with every tank full. Presenting 30 seconds of all the things you can enjoy that are really free. And for all the other things in life, Mellon Bank gives you really free personal checking. This is Mellon Banking. If your transmission's gone foul after a long drive, see your local Amco dealer. Is your name? Okay, Pat. Don't forget to smile because I want everybody to look at the cap. This is the cap we're going to give away. This is the gold and black pirate ski cap that will be given away to youngsters 14 and under who come to Three Rivers two weeks from tomorrow. It's Sunday the 16th. We'll be playing the Mets. And I'm going to tell you, the winter that doesn't seem like it's going to come for a while is going to be here before you know it. And that cap's going to feel so good when winter comes. So you remember, all you youngsters, 14 and under, come out to the ballpark. And Pat, you were a nice model. And that young man running the camera over there who brought the you to the ballpark, we got to thank him for bringing you. That's a ski cap, folks. <laughs> Going to the bottom of the seventh. Almost forgot the game was still on. <laughs> Clark in the fourth inning had a double. He's one for two. If Shidey's listening or watching, I should say, you're wrong. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Clark sends a high foul off to the left. Fans waiting for it to come down. Madlock went over to take a look. Pirates are leading five to one. We've used the long ball in good shape here today, Jim. We have. Uh, Lee couldn't have picked a more opportune time to hit that home run. For two reasons, for the score and for the lady that got all those groceries. That's right, Lacey now has five homers. And it was his second against the Giants this year. Oh, you talk about a bullseye. Now, there was a good shot there of Clark opening up or stepping away for the inside pitch. Again, he's trying to, I think, set up Bibby and get him to throw the ball inside. He's daring him to throw the ball inside. And that is where he's looking. If you watch his front foot, I don't know if he'll do it again. There he did. He opened up. Sure did. 
And uh, that was a breaking ball there. But if, if Bibb is happens to throw a fastball in the zone where where Clark is looking, uh, that's the one that he can generally handle and ride out of the ballpark, or at least put uh, extra bases on it. With our four home runs today, we're back to averaging a home run a game. <laughs> Keep it up. We're going to hit about, if that keeps up, we'll hit about 45 or 50 more homers than we hit last year. That doesn't hurt that pitching staff either. Gives them a little more to work with. No, we love it. You're about due to hit one, aren't you? Well, I'll tell you, I used to be a good hitter, but ever since that car accident I had, I just don't have the strength in my right, right side anymore in my arm to, to really drive the ball. Two balls and two strikes. Now let's see if he lifts that foot again. Yeah. Deep short. It'll take a good strong throw, but it goes a little toward the right field side. And Clark will try to get to second base. Head first slide, and he's in there. All right, now we're going to watch him lift that foot again right here. He is. He's pulling. He's looking for the ball in on him, and that's what Bibb did. Threw it in. Dale made a good play. And he had he had time. He just short hop Willie and Willie couldn't handle it. Uh, it's a tough play. And I don't know how they ruled it, but uh, they give Dale an error on the play. Clark hustled on that, I'll tell you. They gave it a one and he one. He had an error, yeah. It was a tough chance. It and, really uh, was. Clark, uh, he hustled on that play uh, to get the second base. Now, in this kind of a situation, Jim Rucker is where you see how much that Lacey Homer with a man aboard helps you because instead of being in front three to one here, Evans would have been the tying run right now. That's right. So it, Bibby knows now that every pitch is not the end of the world. Plus, being this late in the game, I think uh, we're going to see how much confidence he still has in the fastball and how hard he's still able to throw it. Maybe be a good uh, chance here, Jim, to uh, get that gun on again and and see because uh, he was throwing some 90s and well, 88 to about 92. The last one was 86, so maybe there is maybe it is about a foot short right now. As you say, we're in the seventh inning. That's out to right field for Robbie can handle it, and he's going to fire it in in a hurry. And good play there because Clark had wandered off second a little and. Well, down by four is another reason he didn't try to come over, but give Robbie credit. He got rid of that ball in good shape. Plus the fact that it was hit so hard. Uh, Clark, I'm sure, is breaking with the pitch and uh, didn't really have enough time to get back and tag up. And Bill's momentum is bringing him. It wouldn't have been a good idea to try to come over. Ivy bounced into a double play in the second. Fourth inning bounced to third. 0 for 2 in this game. He's 4 for 11 in the series. And Kent DeColby has started to loosen in the Pirate bullpen. I wonder if they're getting. much they missed of the last play so we'll just take a chance that maybe we were off there Ivy got the base hit to left Lacey had trouble with it twice maybe that was the blessing in disguise because I don't think Ivy tries it and we're going to take another look at it in case everything was off the air there for a minute now there's the base hit now watch the trouble Lacey has Lee it hits his glove and then his leg as he kicks the ball Clark's going to score. Okay, and he tries to pick. Now Ivy figures, well, he's bobbling it again, but as it, it turned out, the ball bounced right back up to Lee, and he's got him at second. 
And back to the live action right there. Whitfield bounced out to Garner. And the side has been retired, so they have to settle for one run on a couple of hits. There was one error, and nobody was left. We've played seven innings. Don't forget, youngsters, about Ski Cap Sunday two weeks from tomorrow at Three Rivers. A score in this one, Pirates 5, Giants 2. I went into Wendy's for the first time. I had a hot and juicy, and I loved it. That night, I had a wonderful dream. I took hot and juicies everywhere. All I could think about was that juicy meat, those juicy toppings. So, I decided to devote myself to bringing pleasure to people, just as I have found it. You want a real good hamburger? Time to trade in for Touch Tune. Trade in your old set for Magnavox Touch Tune color television and save big just for touching Touch Tune television. You'll be handed free this official National Football League manual. It's Magnavox Trade In for Touch Tune time. Trade and save now. It's Trade In for Touch Tune time at Wander Sales. <laughs> Well, Lee Lacey made a fan happy in our Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. And I understand because of technical difficulties uh, back in Pittsburgh today, we're going to slip in another one for you here today. So when I said that the next one would be in St. Louis, little did I realize that an inning later we'd be doing it again. And we're going to do it for Paul DeFore of McDonald. Now, Paul, if you can root the bucks on here with people like Madlock and Stargell, who hit two in the first game, Barra, who hit one. Well, you're going to win $100 worth of Giant Eagle groceries. Bill Madlock, he is two for three in this game and has driven in a run and scored twice. One ball and no strikes. Sixth inning, Montreal. Expos leading Cincy, seven to two. Ball. Phillies are in front of Atlanta, four to three. It's still Christensen and Phil Necro. Bouncer's short. LeMaster lets the ball play him. Throws on. Pretty close play. So Madlock is out short to first. It'll bring up Captain Willie batting for the first time in this game. He hit two home runs in the opening game. Now has 26 for the year. So Paul DeFore of McDonald got to be saying, all right, Willie, why not make it three for the day? First pitch of ball to him. Nepper and Bibby each gone all the way. In the seventh inning when uh, Clark got on, we did have to call the up. But we got a break when Ivy tried to get the second. Two balls and no strikes. Stargell's statement, if you can take him at his word, and why wouldn't you? There's a high pop left side. Evans comes over by the coach's box. And Lynette gives way, and it's two down. Says, as long as this game is fun, I'll keep on playing. As much fun as the captain's having now, he may play forever. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Willie jokes about it every day, every spring training. Comes in and says the same thing. This is the last year for me. I'm going to quit after this year, but I can't imagine uh, coming to spring trainer to the ballpark and not seeing Willie in a uniform. Vera, ball one. Vera. 0 for 3 in this game. Had a big game arriving here this morning, coming up from Portland. Hit a homer and a sacrifice fly. Helped us win that one five to three. Fouled back one and one. He's batting for Paul DeFore of McDonald's as we play Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes. If we sweep this doubleheader, we will have won all five played here with the Giants. There's a foul out of play again to the right side. And could completely turn it around against them tomorrow if Candy can beat them. End up eight and four with this club after what they've done to us the last two years. That would really put turn it around. You said turn it around on Lacey <laughs> when he hit that fastball out of here. 
The Bucks have turned it around against the Dodgers and Giants in 79. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Nobody on base, eighth inning. We've out hit him nine to five, lead five to two. Full count to Barra. Nicosia will be next. Looks like Dale is wondering a little bit about that ball. He gets scuffed up out there pretty easy. Plus, his dirt makes him darker than most other uh, fields we play on. All right, a payoff due. High bouncer. Andrews charging. Throwing. Got him. Eyelash call at first, but Andrews nips him. On to Ivy. Bear is out, and so are the Bucks. We've come to the middle of the eight. Pirates five, Giants two. No home run was hit during this Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning, but no one ever loses here. Our contestant Paul DeBoer of McDonald will receive a certificate for 10 Tasty Cake family packs and an assortment of daily juice products available to participating grocers. Our next Giant Eagle sweepstakes will be worth $200. So we go to the bottom of the eighth with the Pirates trying to sweep a pair. Right now it's the Pirates five and the Giants two. For the first time in Pittsburgh, see the original Broadway star, Richard Kiley, in the all-awards winning musical, Man of La Mancha. I just hope my mascara holds out. I think it was one of the most moving experiences I've ever had. Left me weak and weepy. Seats now at the Stanley Theater starting September 5th for a limited time only. See Man of La Mancha now. It may be your last chance. Well, I can tell you who's got that card. Chuck Tanner. I think he folds that thing and <laughs> I think he wears it out practically during a game, doesn't he, Jim, when you're down there? He has it in and out of his pocket all the time. Chuck's, uh, he's funny, you know, it seems like he stays an inning or two ahead of everybody else uh, about some of the moves that he may make or may not make. He's always uh, right on top of everything, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you one thing, he was ahead of us when he put to Colby in left field in the first game. Sure, well, maybe that's what he was contemplating there. Is there any way I can get Teak into this game? <laughs> Well, he's got him throwing in the bullpen with Jackson right now. So there's Chuck Tanner, the skipper of the Bucks, who in the three years he's been here, he's changed the image of this club. They used to just be a lumbering ball club, both with their bats and not much speed. Now they steal. They hit and run more. He uses the bullpen effectively. Maneuvers people around to the point where almost everybody on the club gets some piece of the pie and... That adds to the happiness because then everybody feels they're a part of the team. This is LeMaster 0 for 2, and he fouls it off. Interesting note that they passed along, wasn't it, Jim, uh, at the end of the inning? They said if we win this doubleheader and then would win tomorrow, it would be the first time in the history of Candlestick that a visiting team had swept the Giants a season series here. Well, that'd be something to shoot for, wouldn't it? Well, it doesn't happen very often, and if it does this year, it'll probably be a long time before it ends again. One ball and one strike. That was an 85-mile-an-hour one, so he's uh, taken a little... At the eighth inning now, he's taken a little bit off. Uh, he's lost a little bit, let's say, but still 85 uh, ain't that bad. He's leading 5-2 to two as he works in the eighth inning on the shortstop LeMaster. 87 right there, so... I think if Bibb has to, if he got into a, a position here where uh, he thought the guy is looking for the fastball, I've got to strike this guy out. Uh, he could reach back and maybe get it back up to 90 again. That looked like it was... It said 83. It looked like it was better than the one that was 88. All right, two and two on LeMaster. Sadek is on deck. 
And there's big Jim Bibby. Keeson won the first game. Jackson saved it. 2-2 pitch. Sawed the bat off in his hands. He got enough of it to foul it down the left side. He says, give me another one. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you get those sawed off in your hands. Bibby at the moment has seven strikeouts when he got Herndon in the sixth that gave him seven. And if he gets another one, it'd be a new season high. All these facts and figures coming from the vast network of source. Joe Safety, our dandy PR director of the Buckos. Joe who? <laughs> That's Joe V. Safety. Bouncer right side. The captain digs it right out of the dirt. One away. Boy, you got to be alert on this infield, don't you? Oh, yeah. The ball always... Well, always, I say. It, it, it'll take a tricky hop. That uh, vicious ball that was hit by Andrews a few innings ago uh, that went over Garner's head. Boy, hit on the line vicious, like that. Yeah, it? hit on the line like that. You'd think the ball would skip, but it didn't. It, it, it hopped over Phil's uh, head. So sometimes you uh, are out there fielding balls in self-defense rather than just making the play. All right, Sadak has been up twice, struck out twice. Let's see if Bibbs can give himself a new season high, but not here because the butt up the first base side. Stargell will grab. Boy, he made that play perfectly. Made it perfect and makes it easy on Bibb, and I know right now, this late in the game, he's saying thank you. One well, pitch, another out. That's right. And Johnston will be the pinch hitter. At times, that'll do, that'll do uh, pitchers a favor when you do that. I know when I'm out there and if a guy will try to bunt or, uh, you know, you, he, he makes the attempt and, and you get him out on one pitch, I don't care who it is, whether it's uh, a guy you've handled well in the past or somebody that has uh, been effective against you, you're, you're always uh, thankful if they're going to concede uh, the out to you, take it. Of course, he was going for the base hit, but uh, he made an easy play for us. That's right. Now this is Johnston, the pinch hitter, batting 176. Fouled right here back toward us. Mrs. Anna DeMore of Pittsburgh reminds us that her father, Mr. Attilio Peretti, from Weedville, is watching our telecast. And today on the first, Jim is celebrating his 95th birthday. So we'll celebrate with him if we win a double dip here. We won the opener five to three, leading in this one five to two. And Mrs. Mary Snyder of Lucinda is celebrating her 89th today and watching our game as she always does. A ball and a strike. Nobody on, two down. Ball game in the eighth inning. So he's not losing that much, and to the average fan watching, he's not going to realize that. 86 again, uh, when you say only 86, that's, that ball's coming up there pretty good. All right, here's a fastball away. We'll see what Bibb does with it, how fast he throws it. That was a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. They didn't show it there, but they... Because he hit it, but they read the meter 90 miles an hour. So there's an indication, like I said a while ago, if he has to or he wants to reach back and, and really put something extra on it, it's still there if he needs it. Bibby came in 9-3. and three. You know, Keeson won his 10th in the first game. Now Bibb's got a chance to win his 10th. And I like his chances. He's leading by three in the eighth. There is a strikeout. 92. It's number eight and a new season high for Bibby. 92 miles an hour. Woo! Well, he reached back in the last two, didn't he? Three up and three down. We've played eight innings. And we'll go to the ninth with this score. Pirates five, Giants two. Ferguson going after, going in on goal. He scores! That's action hockey as only the Pittsburgh Penguins can deliver. And these season ticket holders won't miss a minute of it. Ferguson and the Penguins have defeated the Buffalo Sabres. The entire Civic Arena will be thundering with excitement. 
be part of the action. But hurry, season tickets are going faster than the Penguins on ice. Everything you ever knew about snowmobiles is about to change forever. For this is the year that the Skidoo snowmobile will go beyond anything you've ever imagined. The world's number one selling snowmobile. Now the world's number one way. Go See the world's largest ice cream cone on Monday's Evening Magazine. On September 13th, the great Lou Brock will play his last game at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh. You can see his last game there and also save $1.50 at the same time. Thursday, September 13th at Three Rivers is the last buck night of this season when all tickets will be discounted $1.50. Why don't you plan to be at Three Rivers on buck night September 13th and say a fond farewell to Lou Brock. When Lou was there recently, our fans really gave him a nice welcome when we saluted him. There's Nicosia ripping one to left center. Boy, he hit a bullet off Moffitt, their new pitcher. Well, that's some way to get greeted coming in out of the bullpen. He, he knocked that ball lopsided. Yeah, Nick hit it right on the nose. Five to two. Moffitt, uh, you know, he's in there. He knows, uh, of course, he's got to hold us right here to give them any chance, if any at all, to get back into the game. And... Uh, here we are in a situation where probably Bibb's going to bunt him over and hopefully we'll get this run in. Well, this insurance runs again. And here's uh, one of the reasons their pitching uh, was not as good. Moffitt's battled some injuries this year. He's 2 and 5 with an ERA of 736 and only two saves. Bibby bunting. Moffitt to get it. He won't find a handle until. Well, he did. By golly, he got Bibby at that. I thought the way he was struggling with that ball, he was going to end up having everybody safe. That gets. Nicosia down to second. We'll take another look at it. He had some trouble with that ball. Look at Bibby bunt this thing. He's got it. Good bunt. Moffat kind of took, yeah, he was he was moving before he really had the ball to throw to first. Bib made it close. So the sacrifice gets him down there, and Omar now won't mind a bit not looking at Nepper again. No. Moreno is one for four in this game, had a triple in the third inning. He's had three hits in the series, driven in a couple of runs. He's been to bat. This is his 14th at bat in the series. Got a strike on the outside corner to make it 0-1. We have out hit them 10 to 5, leading the score 5 to 2. And let's look to their ninth, which will see the top of their order. So I imagine it'll be Bibby on the mound in the center of the diamond and the bullpen ready. Line drive center, base hit. Look at Nikosia coming home. The throw is in time, and he nipped him at the wire. Nikosia's out at the plate. So Herndon threw a strike to Sadek, who had the plate blocked in pretty good shape, too, didn't he? Good throw, the same as uh, Clark, I think, uh, when he threw the ball earlier in the game, it was on the fly. And here's another one all the way in the air. Usually you try to hit the cutoff man, but in this case, you don't have it play unless you can get it in the, in the air. And Sadak did a good job by getting the ball, blocking the plate, and tagging the runner at the same time. So that's our second man thrown out at the plate in this game, but we're still leading by three. Here's Phil Garner, one for four, had a base hit in the seventh inning and scored on a lacy two-run homer. So Omar at second base. Good pitch there. I think it was the last time we were here, the first trip in. Moffitt, I think, uh, hurt himself in a game against us and had to be taken from the game and was on the disabled list for some time. Steps away with no intention of throwing because neither shortstop Lamaster or second baseman Andrews was moving toward the bag at all. No balls, one strike. Bouncer short. Hey, that's going to leap over Lamaster, and we're going to get that run after all. Well, Geiner's got to be saying, hey, don't look to me for any sympathy. A ball that Andrews hit against me almost tore my head off. Turnabout's fair play. Garner knew exactly how he feels. 
pounded it right he into it. He tops the ball, yeah. Takes the tricky hop right there. And uh, LeMaster did all he could to try and catch the ball, but uh, the ball getting that overspin and taking off, you just don't have much of a chance. Lacey fouls it off. We're now leading by four in a six to two game. You know, it doesn't show up right now because it's not such a big run, but there was a case there. Omar, what, was 0 for 4, three strikeouts. A uh, man on second base, and here he comes back, gets a hit up the middle in a big game, a close game. He comes through again and does his job by getting the base hit. Bouncer foul outside third. That makes it 0-2 on Lacey. Lacey's had a single and a two-run homer in this game. Phil Garner getting his first RBI in this game and his second in the series. He had one last night, you'll recall. The errors are even in this game at one. We've out hit them 12 to five, lead six to two. Pirates, if they can hang on, will win their 80th game to go with 54 losses. Oh, we're sneaking up on a 600 percentage, and that's playing baseball, folks. Fouled way down the right side. The fans going for the souvenir. I think it's kind of a pickup for our club because we know that Montreal is three games right there. And the fact that they're still putting the heat on us, and they are. Uh, you have to be realistic about it. But the, us uh, continuing to win and win and being on the road at the same time, it says an awful lot for our guys. Threw the ball away. And Garner will get to second easily. I'd say that's a tough pass ball. That ball was really zipping up. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if they crossed him up because the ball is really right down the middle and Sadek is uh, he, he doesn't react to that ball at all. No. And seeing the replay, I'll agree with the call now too. I believe he should have caught it. Yeah. Mets got a run off James Rodney Richard. That's going to be a moral victory. <laughs> Boy, he's been pitching the last month. Fouled off by Lacey, still one and two. So here we are in another doubleheader where some different people have contributed. Barra in the first, Lacey in this game, bouncer up the middle. It's going to get another run home for Bibby. The throw to the plate will be way off target, and Lacey gets in the second. Now in that particular situation and you pointed out earlier that maybe a run another run here doesn't look that big or maybe the play doesn't but Herndon there got no play at the plate. No he doesn't. He's not going to throw Phil out. Phil's too good of a base runner and he runs too good. Uh, you've got to just keep uh, keep the ball in, into second base. That's a gift run there that, that because of the pass ball. But uh, we'll take them any way we can get them. Uh, heck, what the heck? Seven to two, eight to two. We'll take some more. This is Bill Robinson, two for four. Oh, he pops some leather there. So Bill Robinson, who had a double in the second and a single in the sixth, he's two for four in this game and is two for eight with an RBI in the series. Fouled over here to the right. Sadek over. Does he have room? Almost, and he fell over. See that? He went over that little... Retaining fence down there. Boy, they got to give him a hand. What an effort for Mike Sadek. It is. I think he feels bad about that pass ball. He said something to Moffitt as if to say, I'm sorry, big guy. It was my fault. And he does make a heck of a try. And actually, I think he dove a little too far. The ball looked like it hit him on the heel of the glove. Might have used the fence for a little leverage yeah, there. Yeah, Yeah. But uh, when you're that close to the, to the wall and making a dive of some kind, it's pretty hard to judge distances when you know in the back of your mind that fence is creeping up on you. All right, it's 0-2 on Bill Robinson. We've got a couple insurance runs in the inning, leading 7-2. A high pop out behind third. LeMaster has the best look, and he makes the play. But the Bucks have an inning. They've given Bibby something to work with. Two runs on four hits. No errors. And the guy was thrown out at the plate already in the inning. But a pass ball helped. And one man left. So we'll go to the bottom of the ninth with a chance to sweep and get our 80th victory of the year. It's the Pirates 7 and the Giants 2. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. 
And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Tasty cake is a day in spring. A brand new love or a golden ring. Tasty cake is the morning sun. It's all the good things wrapped up in one. Kids just never seem to get enough Tasty Cake. For over 60 years, we've fresh-baked Tasty Cake with milk, butter, eggs, and chocolate. And today, wherever there's a kid, there'll be a Tasty Cake. Tasty Cake is a world of fun. It's all the good things wrapped up in one. Well, that look at the big scoreboard tells you the happiness that can be ours after three more outs. We won two in San Diego, two in Los Angeles. We would be seven and two if we hang on to this one with a chance to make it eight and two. And that would really be a road trip coming west. I'll tell you, that's a good road trip anywhere, but I think when you come out here and play that well, it's, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't want to play any better than that. That's outstanding. Now with the five run lead, Jim, and still the, well, he threw two over 90 miles an hour to strike out the pinch hitter and left hand batter Johnston in the eighth. He got the luxury here of going fastball, hasn't he? He can if he wants to. And just say, hey, I've got a five run lead. Even if some guy hits one out, I'm still four plus. Right. He's, he's, well, he's going to keep his head about the situation. He's not going to get, let's say, gay out there and just, uh, you know, this is where you pitch for outs here. He don't have to try and strike anybody out. Just keep throwing the spots. Fly ball for Moreno in left center. He's letting Lacey know that he's going to take charge, and he does, and it's one away in the ninth inning. That's right. Let the guys play out there. Let them hit the ball, and uh, ground ball here, fly ball there. Good night. Well, we've got some newlyweds from Pittsburgh here, Jim. Mr. and Mrs. Rick Fetter. They're on their honeymoon and watching us here today, and the Jack W. Dixons the groom's parents watching in Greensburg. They got to be getting a kick out of knowing that the newlyweds are here and seeing the Bucks take two. There's a line drive to left and Lacey will be right there, two away. Boy, you talk about Bibby letting it all hang out here in this inning. He's gotten two outs before you could bat an eyelash. Well, that's what, that's what, what I mean by pitching for outs. Bib isn't trying to get cute. He's still going right at him and uh, making him hit the ball and uh, letting the guys play. He doesn't have to strike anybody out anymore. We'll go. He will go to his 10th victory with one more out, but the point I wanted to make was this, that since Keeson went to double figures, Bibby's going to double. They will join Blylevin with 11, Candelaria with 12, and Romo with 10. Five pitchers now in double figures. There's a high pop foul over here to the right. I don't think Nick has a play at all. No, he doesn't. And it's strike one on Clark, who's had a double and a single and scored a run in this game. The Pirates are leading 7-2. to two. Well, when you throw those kind of numbers out, that just goes without saying. I've said ever since I've been in Pittsburgh, and even this spring, that I think we have the best all-around pitching staff in baseball. And when you can throw that many guys out there with that can run up that many victories, uh, you know, that's really saying something. Myself and... Uh, Robbie's had problems. We should probably be doing a little better than we are, but uh, we got a month to go, and things will turn out. And you'd like to start doing that in the second game Monday at home against the Phillies, right? Right on, right on. Jim will be pitching along with Blylevin in that doubleheader Monday at home against the Phillies. There's a high pop, and when it comes down, we should have swept a doubleheader. Mad Dog will squeeze it, and Bibbs finishes with a flourish. Does he ever? is his second complete game of the year and did it against the Giants. He retired the last seven in a row. And the Bucks are a happy crew and Big Jim Bibby. What a game he pitched. Moved into the 10-game winner's circle along with Keeson here today and did it with a root-going performance. We won the first one five to three and we're going to have the totals on this one that ended like this. Pirates seven, Giants two. 
Fred, <laughs> how's the new father? How about a peek? Wow. A girl. Uh, a boy. Yeah. And another boy. Fred. You're gonna need help. <laughs> Why don't you talk to my bank? Mellon Bank, about a home improvement loan. They make more than any bank in town. Fast, too. 24 hours. Hmm. I mean, let's face it, you need a new addition. But, uh oh to the house, Fred. Making oh, home improvement <laughs> loans. This is Mellon Banking. Hey, did you play today? Yep, my bowling score. I didn't know they had numbers that low. <laughs> did you remember to play today? Our new address, straight. Hey, that pays 500 to one. <laughs> It's 7 o'clock! Good evening, everyone. It's time for the live drawing of The Daily Number. The Daily Number. It's a big hit. Play today, watch tonight. Uh, great buy. I can have it delivered tomorrow. Great number. I can play it tomorrow. That's it. Well, we'd like to show you Jim Bibby when this game ended. He knows right there that if somebody gets under it, he's going to be home free, right? Well, this was a big, big day for our Bucks. You come in here against a... I don't care if we did beat them two out of two the first time in, Jim Rooker. You come in here again. Sure, they've been disgruntled and they've been having some problems. But uh, look at look at old Viv. Look at him. He wants... <laughs> call him Dog, isn't he? Dog, Dog. dog. That's Mad right. Mad Dog. That's the pitcher's job in that play, too, to make right. sure that the catcher and third baseman don't get messed up and let it drop, right? That's right. That's right. Bib knows what he's out there for. <laughs> So, we've done it again, folks, and the Buccos have swept a doubleheader, and here are the happy, happy totals in the second game. 7-13-1, and one, we leave six. Winner, Bibby, now 10-3, and three went all the way. There was no winning RBI because the deciding run scored on the error on Evans. A home run for Lacey. He got his fifth of the year, and the Giants get only five hits. They were 2-5-1. and one. They left only one. Loser, Nepper, he is now 9-10. and 10. We beat a good lefty here. And uh, by winning this, we got a chance to sweep them tomorrow. We are now 80 and 54, 26 over 500. If we win here tomorrow with the Candyman going after his 13th, I tell you, they ought to put people in Three Rivers on Monday for that Labor Day doubleheader with a shoehorn. We'll have some kind of traffic jam and happy for it. Boy, I tell you. All right, Jim, thanks for the help here today. And, uh, boy, you can have some fun when you're playing this kind of ball, can't you? You better believe it, Milo. And you get on that airplane tomorrow along with the Dutchman, get home, get your rest, and be ready for the doubleheader you're going to pitch in that second game. We'll be ready. All right, that does it. We've won a doubleheader, 5-3 to three and 7-2, to two, and that winds up Pirate Baseball for today and tonight. Be with us again Wednesday, September 5th at 8.30 from Bush Stadium when the Bucks meet the St. Louis Cardinals. Pirate Baseball has been brought to you in part by Daily Juice Products, sponsor of Daily's Favorite Pirate Contest. You'll be sure to vote in Daily's Favorite Pirate Contest, won't you? And in part by the Bell System Yellow Pages. If you're still just a listing, wake up and say something about your business. It pays to advertise in the Yellow Pages. Coverage of tonight's game produced and directed by Brian Seip. Associate producer is Brady Lever. Production and technical facilities provided by TPC Pittsburgh studio director Brad Risch. So until we greet you and hope you'll be with us on radio tomorrow to see if the Candyman can sweep them. This is Milo Hamilton along with Lanny Proteri and Jim Rooker saying so long everybody from Candlestick Park in San Francisco where the Bucks beat them a doubleheader 5-3 to three and 7-2. to two. Now stay tuned for Hee Haw which will join in progress. This is Pirate Baseball on TV2. Eyewitness News Break is sponsored tonight by Hills Department Store. Here's some of the stories we're working on tonight in the Eyewitness Newsroom. We're just two hours away from a midnight strike deadline for golf and Amoco gasoline haulers. Arco's already on strike. A huge tanker explosion in Texas. Three people hurt, several missing, and fires burning for hours. People in Florida get ready as Hurricane David heads their way. A second suspect is picked up in connection with that Cannonsburg double murder. We'll have details at 11 o'clock tonight. What does back to school mean to you? getting my own apartment and I'm going to need everything 
Well, have you heard about the housewares at Hills? They've got trusted names like Mikasa Dinnerware, Echo Stainless, Rubbermaid, and Corningware. In fact, it's one of the largest selections of housewares you'll find, no matter what you need. And if you've got a small back-to-school budget, Hills Everyday Low Prices can make a big difference. That's the difference I need. For back-to-school, it's Hills. Let's teach inflation a lesson. Let's. Fire's burning me in my mind. You just keep turning me every which way but blue. Baby, there's no excuse to turn me every which way but blue. When the sun comes up in the morning, it should find me someplace new. But right this minute, all I want is to lay here next to you. Those memories still keep calling me from somewhere in my past. Better hurry if they want me, cause I can feel me fading fast. While you're turning me Every which way but lose You turn me every which way but lose Inside the fire's burning me In my mind you just keep turning me Every which way but lose Baby there's no excuse To turn me every which way Hi, from Austin to Boston, from Seiko to Waco, this is Lisa, your weather girl with temperatures, forecasts, storms, and all of those good things. Snow is heavy in the Texas area. It snowed so much in downtown Dallas that a policeman discovered a man with just his head sticking out of the snow. Well, the policeman told the man to hold on and he'd go get a shovel. And the man said he'd better go get one with a long handle because he was standing on an oil there. <laughs> any day of the year. At least you don't have to shovel it. <laughs> from all you suffering from an unusually cold winter, I'd advise you to keep warm, wear long underwear, and keep your trap shut. <laughs> Till time <laughs> well, if her forecasts aren't amazing, at least they're amusing. <laughs> <laughs> invented the grandfather clock. Well, I'm not sure, teacher, but I think it was Pendulum Franklin. <laughs> now, class, who can tell me what Alexander the Great and Smokey the Bear have in common? I can handle that, teacher. All right, Archie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alexander the Great and Smokey the Bear both have the same middle name. Oh. <laughs> Don't you go away. Hee Haw's gonna be right back. <laughs> you hoo girdle lady. Wrong girdle. The I can't believe it's a girdle, girdle. How can this lightweight with no back panels, no side panels, give me for control? What? Okay, I'll try it. This Playtex girdle secret, it's amazing lightweight fabric controls like this heavy panel job weighing 50% more. She'll love it. I love it. Firm control everywhere and light. The Playtex, I can't believe it's a girdle. Now I believe it's a girdle. Do the special K pinch. Uh-oh. Uh oh, what? I just did the special K pinch. What's that? A little test to see if you need to watch your weight. If you can pinch more than an inch, you probably do. And I did. <laughs> I bet I know what you're having for breakfast. <laughs> can you pinch more than an inch? Try the Special K breakfast. Protein, vitamins, iron, just 240 calories. Make high-protein Kellogg's Special K cereal part of your complete diet plan. Uh-oh. Do the Special K pinch. See, I told you. We're back. <laughs> Buck Owens and the Buckaroos. I like dark little neighborhood places.
places with bowling machines in the rear where the folks are friendly and they don't ask questions if there's none you'd like to hear i like ladies in long black dresses with earrings that sparkle and shine yeah just like the one that used to come in here one that i used to call mine put up another round joe she's still soft on my mind what's that you're telling me now joe that you might have to take me home this time oh i like dark little neighborhood places with bowling machines in the rear where the folks are friendly and they don't ask questions if you laugh or cry in your beer another round joe she's still soft on my mind what's that you're telling me now joe that you might have to take me home this time hey i like dark little neighborhood places with bowling machines in the rear where the folks are friendly and they don't ask questions you can laugh or cry in your beer I like ladies in long black dresses with earrings that sparkle and shine. They just like the one that used to come in here, the one that I used to call mine. <laughs> Don't that sop your gravy? <laughs> Maynard! Come over here. You're an hour late. What's your excuse? Oh, Mr. Gordon, my wife had a five-pound baby Wait boy. Wait a minute. You're Wait. not married. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be it, then. <laughs> I had a terrible car accident. Maynard, Ma Maynard, you don't drive. <laughs> You don't even have a car, Maynard. Well, that can't be it either, then. Oh, my pants exploded. My giraffe ran away. I had to... Maynard, you are fired. That's... Oh! No, no. Did I hear that right? Did uh, I hear you just fire Maynard? I certainly did. Well, good. Now he can open his own general store across the street. I've collected money from all your customers to buy it, and you'll be out of business. Oh, no, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was a little hasty, Maynard. I was a little hasty. You're hired again. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Gordon. go to work. Okay, bye-bye. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm, you did, just perfectly. Just the way I told you. Maynard, why were you late for work? I was dreaming I was in New York City, and it's one hour later there. <laughs> he also lose Hinderhan, Illinois. Population, 98. <laughs> And remember, Angerhan, Illinois, spelled backwards, is Narignai Sionilli. Falling in love was your bad habit. You never gave true love a start. When your blue eyes saw Eddie Rabbit, you tried to grab the poor lad by the heart. <laughs> The World Conference of Astrologers recently announced that the two most incompatible signs are Macy's and Gimbal. Truth is 